Welcome to the Cincy Postcast. I'm your host, Kevin Wallace. And before we get into today's episode, I want to tell you about our sponsor, Streetside Brewery. Look, these guys are located in historic Columbia, Tusculum neighborhood on the east side of Cincinnati. And Streetside is really the perfect mix of just local neighborhood watering hole and a modern craft beer brewery. They have 24 beers on tap, and I promise you, you will not find a bad one amongst them. These guys were great when they had us out for the live show for the CONCACAF Champions Cup kickoff to start FC Cincinnati season, and they do events all throughout the year. They do a pint night on Tuesday nights. They do Premier League mornings. Tons of really fun events there. But a special note to Postcast listeners, if you mention the Cincy Postcast at the bar when you're getting your beer, they will take a buck off of your beer and you let them know that we sent you their way. You can find them at 4003 Eastern Avenue or in the fridge of wherever you're picking up your next beer. Again, a huge, huge thank you to Streetside Brewery for sponsoring the Postcast. And on this very special episode of the Postcast, This is our 150th episode, which feels like a milestone that we should have acknowledged on the show, and I only realized after the fact (laughs) this is a really cool moment. The fact that we've made it this far, this long, a huge thank you to anybody and everybody who listens to us. This was a fun one to record. Uh, two games to recap in this one. I, I'm sorry, folks. There's a lot of soccer in this episode. We're talking Monterey and New England Revolution. This team, how are they looking? Mixed bag of results, but... Uh, Are things pointing in the right direction here? Then in part two, it's a little bit of FCC news grab bag, and it's only a two-parter. That's what you get on a special 150th episode of The Postcast. Joining me to talk about all of that and more, I'm joined by two gentlemen ready to talk about two FC Cincinnati games, I'm joined by the Chief, and I'm not joined by Grayson. After failing to hit the record button last episode, we've decided to, to relegate him. He has been relegated to the championship podcast, promoted Jonah Knifey Lion Radio. Yes. <laughs> I keep saying Night Feel Lane Radio. How many Why people <laughs> even remember at this point? That's kind of a terrifying how, thought. Wow. Wow. First of all, how dare you? Not at you. Just Father Time <laughs> is undefeated, baby. <laughs> uh, it makes sense I promoted. I'm mostly known for my USL takes. <laughs> D- didn't, didn't have much to speak about for the MLS, so it's good to get the big call up. Russell Ciceroni, mm. the man who never got his but deserved it. This is for you, buddy. I am convinced he would have been great in 2019 on this MLS team. There's no reason why he shouldn't have been called up. He couldn't have been worse than who (laughs) he brought up. (laughs) No chance of that. I'm just envisioning a world now where where Grayson has been relegated to KLR, and he's got the login credentials, and you just get a Grayson. (laughs) What up, world? I got 80 listeners coming his way. Don't worry. <laughs> the Grayson and Zach episodes would be flawless. <laughs> <laughs> the chemistry. <laughs> the amount of ums unparalleled. Absolutely. There is, I, I think back on that transition often from USL to MLS. It's very unique in American soccer. And I can't help but think that like so many of the wrong lots of USL guys were picked. Like Patty Barrett probably should have been picked to go up i i don't know why evan newton didn't get the call up versus spencer ritchie i mean i understand age played some role in there but they're similar age like it's a very weird choosing. you're also you're also lying if you didn't want to see deckel kane for at least one mls match come on could he have been worse literally there's no, no chance no. there's no chance <laughs> the justin worst. hoyt wasn't bad 
Right. Like he had, he was one of our better players. <laughs> uh, it's not an offense at him. It's just, yeah, he should have been Deckel. Who? I mean, there's, there's, there's quite a few. Who? Michael Lahoud. Michael Lahoud should have been. He played in MLS for most of his career. I just weird. I just, I know he's like cool on Twitter now, but a lot of questions about Alan Koch. <laughs> yeah. there's a reason why he is where he is in the in the coaching world these days i think interesting speaking choices of, speaking of usl and i guess we're gonna get into this a little bit when we start recapping these games but like was it weird to anyone else that ian harks played a full game against us today and there wasn't one single mention that his dad used to manage this team <laughs> it's kind of weird That's true <laughs> We are now old enough to where the sons of former FC Cincinnati managers are playing against our team. This is a bizarre thing. I also would have to go back and check. There's a decent chance Ian Harks has played against FC Cincinnati before because he was in the DC United system. Ah, uh, maybe remember. not. So he played for. I don't know if DC United 2 and Loudoun United, I don't think he ever was there. And I don't think he was ever loaned to uh, the Kickers. That was their big thing. So maybe not. Maybe this was indeed the first time, but damn. I guarantee there's no one else that understands this reference, but I'm going to make it because it's personally important to me. Ian Harks, proud alum, the Gonzaga College High School, Washington, DC. <laughs> Hail Gonzaga. I can't believe they didn't mention that either. I know, right? <laughs> He was so there are, up. There <laughs> are dozens of us. Dozens. <laughs> <laughs> but the announcer was so fired up about everything. He was like, next week's slate of games coming up. You're going to be. I was like, Jews, dude, chill the fuck out. I like this team a lot, and I'm not nearly as jazzed as you to watch it's, this game. It's two o'clock on a Sunday during St. Pat's. Some of us are trying to sleep. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, oh, Higginbottom is, uh, is a very. Very, I don't know, enthusiastic announcer. He gets really into it every time. Jonah, I have to ask you since you're on here. Uh, when are the extra Ope shirts shipping out? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know how the USPS is still recovering from the Trump years. So they're out there. They're floating around. People didn't even give their addresses. They're like, how does he know? I have my ways. And, um, and there's more than one unethical sports commentator <laughs> reporter out there doing things underboard uh but just something to look out for that heather white shirts coming your way oh fest 2020 no i didn't put the year on it did i just put the date remember that <laughs> somebody was like why didn't you put the year on there i was like you know what springsteen wasn't paying attention <laughs> so this is what happens when i'm left to my own yes will, will, will there be an Ope fest 2024 shirt and will you be participating in Ope fest 2024 I don't think there's any way around it. So if Ope Fest 2024 happens, you might as well start your pre-order now. Start putting a quarter in the jar, one a day. By the time it's Ope Fest, you'll have enough. Trust me. <laughs> a quarter. Get excited a just thinking about it. A quarter a day. If if Ope Fest is in like September, <laughs> that's a very expensive T-shirt. Don't make me do the math. <laughs> August 31st. Come on now. Uh, do we inflation. have a date? Are you announcing a, an Ope Fest date? I'm announcing a proposed date. Okay. That's my. Pr I figure, Whoa. like, I figure, somebody like, at some point, I just need to announce it to force us to start doing work to plan it. Is where we're at. <laughs> then fine, I'm staking it out. August 31st <laughs> there it is. is Ope Fest. Ope Fest 2024, August 31st, <laughs> Montreal Impact Labor Day weekend. What is Opie if not the working man's mascot? So on Labor Day weekend, it will be all things Ope, all things Opie. Damn. I'm into this. This is great. Down with the French Canadians, too. Oh, yeah, this feels ex extra yeah, we're powerful. Playing, playing Montreal that weekend. That's good. Yeah. He hates uh, Quebec independence. It's a fun He's... fact about OP. OP hates francophones. <laughs> Just can't stand them. <laughs> Wasn't it obvious? <laughs> it's clear. That's why he's so bald. He's just yeah. been stressing about this. <laughs> Opie calls them freedom fries. <laughs> Still, he's the last one. <laughs> Still. <laughs> there were some free Opie uh, hashtags underneath FCC uh, <laughs> tweets, which I respected. And they were spelling it O-P-I-E, but, you know, as long as you got... Whatever, whatever's in your heart, you spell it however you want. <laughs> Is there anything the more on brand for Opie than his name being spelled incorrectly? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's no wrong way to spell it. That's true. 
free Opie. <laughs> really takes a lot of the wind out of the protests, but that's yeah, good. <laughs> hey, you know who else has been banned from the crowds? <laughs> That's so true. You got a multi-week suspension. You got a lifetime suspension. <laughs> yeah. I uh I've, I've mentioned this many more times than need to, but I sit right behind uh FCC employee Katie Solomon and at the last game I caught I caught a t-shirt from the t-shirt gun Ooh. one-handed. I um, don't mean to brag, but no, it's the most athletic do. feat of my life. <laughs> <laughs> right in front of a dad and his kid in another row who definitely thought they were getting it. And I was like, "Eh?" Like I I like showed it to him. He was like, "Uh, you're fine." Uh, and Katie Solomon looks up. We never talk. She said, wow, "That was a great catch." Oh. And like I, I was like, "That was my window opening." I want to be like, "I am Opie." <laughs> <You know? laughs> I want to be like, "You know," i be like, "You know who I am." You just don't realize it. You banned me from the stadium. I know the laughs we would have shared, but then the moment was passed, and I just like to like tap her on the shoulder, like, "Hey, by the way, free Opie." But, uh, the day's coming. You know? <laughs> free Opie. It's like, pardon? <laughs> so, oh my god. I didn't even know they did T-shirt cannons. I've been, I am not paying attention. I think it's at halftime when everybody's going. Yeah. If you're like me, I run immediately to the men's room as soon as halftime hits in order to try and beat some semblance of the crowd. So they could quite literally be dropping cash from the roof <laughs> at, the st- at the stadium, and I would have no idea. They don't shoot it on the bougie side, Kevin. Oh, so right. don't worry. Sorry. About it. <laughs> They're not shooting it at the pitch view. They're like, oh. I'd always get annoyed. This is an at... Egyptian cotton. Yeah. Oh, this T-shirt has gotten in my caviar. Oh, what's the what's the thread count on this? Uh, the uh, I always get annoyed at Reds games when the T-shirt cannon is pointed straight up so that the uh, in my day the blue seats could get the T-shirts. It's like, whoa! All right, come on. This is T-shirt cannons for for red, maybe yellow and green. All right, this is for the people. Every so yeah. often, they should just bring the t-shirt cannon up to the upper deck, but still keep it at the same power setting as they fire it at people. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is how Ned Flanders' wife died in The Simpsons, too, right? I'm pretty sure, yes. yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, I think it's Texas A&M Games, or maybe it's Texas Tech. They uh, they, they shoot burritos at uh, at the student section. Do you, so. do you remember the Reds games back in the day? They used to shoot hot dogs out of a cannon. They had a giant yeah. air cannon that was shaped like a hot dog and would shoot a wrapped hot dog up into the upper deck. I never caught a t-shirt, but I did catch a hot dog one time. There's a group of guys who grill out on their patio uh, that overlooks the uh, the March route uh, right as it goes into Washington Park. And, uh, yeah, they wrap up hot dogs in foil and throw them out to the March as, as people go by. I've caught two so far, so uh, keep it up, boys. That is awesome. Yep. That's an advertisement for joining the March right there. Like we said last week, where it's, you know, join the March at least once. If you... Possibility of a free hot dog. I think that that's all the inducement most people need. Uh, although it was not the athletic achievement that Jonah had, uh, I cheated. I was carrying a uh, a two pole, and I used it as a net to catch the hot dog. <laughs> way easier that way. <laughs> Maybe next time I'll bring ketchup and mustard on the route and see if that'll be an inducement for them to drop one down. It's like, hey, I brought my own condiments <laughs> for this one. This guy gets it. Uh, I have a question. Is there, well, I guess maybe, do people do Kickstarters for like events? Mm. Like how could you crowdfund Opefest to make it bigger? I, you don't want it to be under the guise of anything altruistic. You know, you want it front right. and center. Mm-hmm. This is what it is. It's Opefest. <laughs> yeah, it's dumb. <laughs> we need Red's Apple Ale this time, you know, in a cooler. <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> It's like, I think people, I've, you know, the post has proven that people are willing to get behind things they believe in and I we'll like see that. how many people believe in them best. I like this. But then you have a responsibility, but yeah. You could do uh, different stretch goals and have like stereotypical festival booths. So like $250, we get a caricature artist. <laughs> we $500 space animals. painter. Yeah. $1,000. didn't say there's good though, yeah. We get the rat game from the West Side Church Festivals. <laughs> Are you guys familiar with the rat game? How has the rat game not been canceled by society? I don't know. It's the best thing ever, though. (laughs) You know you're at a real one when the rat game shows up. (laughs) Because that is kind of my vision for Opefest, is that Opefest does become the secular church festival for the soccer-going population of FC Cincinnati. Mm. Why couldn't we, you know? Everything we've put our minds to, except for... um, Making a successful <laughs> podcast, writing articles for the website, 
getting credentialed. <laughs> what is it that we wanted to be? Not advisors. What's what's the more professional word? Oh, for, consultants. Uh, consultants. Yes. Yeah, being high paid consultants, more than just on some absolute bullshit. That was the real dream. But beyond that, I'd say everything else. Was I still think there was a successful. market for that, like a like consultants to go in and help you astroturf like support for a soccer culture if you're starting a usl club <laughs> just just be everything that like ted westervelt accuses you of being <laughs> or like when when like usmnt american flag emoji uh crusader online God. all mls teams are are funded by their the the league and their supporters are fake it's like yeah they are <laughs> yeah but they pay well so. but they pay well yeah we got rich doing that though the check's clear <laughs> what do you want from me <laughs> get that sweet There's sweet still time. usl money uh oh the other one was uh i really wanted us to this this could get us in a lot of trouble i want us to be an agent somewhere down the line so that we can just get involved <laughs> in some of this i just want to be involved in a transfer like, saga you just want to start feeding someone information over the dms is all you want to do <laughs> yeah yeah oh, oh do you remember do you remember we were all kicking around that we were going to do a board game um, yes. that it was a uh, it was a, a tabletop cooperative four person tabletop game where the goal was to convince your municipality of the need to build a sports stadium for whatever <laughs> team it was that you were trying to lure. <laughs> still a good idea. I still think this plays. I still think yeah. if we sat down and did drugs, I think we could come up with everything we need to do in order to make this game happen. <laughs> oh, there's so many good ideas. I love this. Like. The size of city. Is it a new team or a relocation that changes things? Yeah, you got like a deck of cards you draw, and that's like the community deck where like people come out of the woodwork to protest things. So like <laughs> here is a community deck for environmental activists that's mad that you're using land for whatever purpose. And you have to allocate resource to overcome this. So here's one for pastor of congregation mad that their church parking lot will be now overflowed with supporters on game day. And you've got to you allocate resources and work together to overcome that. I love this. The uh, the awesome. difficulty would be the league that you're trying to get in. So like NFL, pretty easy. NWSL, a little trickier. <laughs> so little, little teams aren't as as willing to bend over backwards. There, it could be fun. Yeah, Jonah, you breathed. <laughs> Does the current not have the same ownership of sport in Kansas City? They do not. It's so okay. Weird. Good. I just I was like I was just. I was like, I'm happy they got their own stadium, but I was just perplexed. I was like, just use this stadium. But I guess if they have different ownership, that's fair enough. But the, good for them. I was just shocked that there's a soccer specific stadium that wasn't getting doubly used. And it's like, I'm sure is what we would do. Yeah. On the river. It's like really nice. <laughs> yeah. It's like in their downtown. It's, it's smaller than SKC's, but otherwise, yeah. in every other way, it, it looks like it'll be better. So, yeah. Good for them. Yeah. I'm just, I was, I was just surprised. I yeah. uh I don't know why MLS doesn't require these teams to do this or like why the MLS teams are so hesitant. Very weird. The women's you know, the women's game is is odd to me. Like if that. our if our only game was against New England Revolution, we were recapping this would be the ultimate transition right here. Of hey, speaking of a team that plays in a cavernous, awful facility and can't build their own <laughs> soccer specific stadium, how about the Revs? <laughs> But, they got one coming soon, right? They keep teasing for years and years. Yeah, they they got no rendering. So allegedly close this past off season with something on on the river there, but uh, yeah, over on the uh, I think on the Mystic River over yeah. by it's. I've stayed in the area. The last time I was in Boston, it's a really it's a really neat place that they're redeveloping called the Assembly. Uh, Steve Wynn just built a casino over there that looks yep. identical to the one in Vegas. If they get a stadium built there, it'll actually be really really cool. Yeah, they uh, they said that they were going to do that, and then the uh, community, you know, council or whatever came out and said, "Yeah, uh, nobody... yeah, they drew the wrong they drew the wrong card out of the deck there, <laughs> they baby." Sure <laughs> they sure did. They said, "Hey, nobody ever told us anything about this," and I I think it's actually now dead. So it's good. Oh. See, it's, it, you know, it's a good board game when occasionally you don't win. <laughs> That's true. That's true. It should be it should be difficult. Um, well, speaking of. Two games having to recap. We should probably at some point talk about the soccer this I'm gonna say weekend. I'm counting Thursday as the weekend here. We're going college, college rules. Never yeah. leave college. <laughs> <laughs> so Monterey on Thursday, the game ends two to one. I have to think about that for a second. I don't have the result in front of me. Right? 
Yeah. No, it, no, it ended with uh, Utah playing Colorado. Wait, Jack sorry. And, yes. and Jack and threes with. <laughs> Who knows or how it you, ended? Or, or if you were on the Discord, it, all, it ended with you following a very sketchy link from Joseph Mamey <laughs> to watch a game in your browser. <laughs> Did you feel something kind of calming and relaxing? It's like when it, like I, I realized I couldn't get the game. Like I kind of just like <sighs> stop existing. <laughs> like that. Yeah, yeah. It was like it was like out of my as if I was controlling it by watching it. You like really. Th- that's how dumb we are as sports fans. You're like, I can make this happen. And then once I, I like lost, I like, you know, losing all hope is freedom kind of thing. I was like, right. I couldn't see it anymore. Out of sight, out of mind. Once I heard about that bicycle kick again, I was pissed off again, though. Like, right. How dare I miss an almost bike? <laughs> it was, I mean, let's talk about that right now. The ending of this game was so stupid. And exactly why MLS does a lot of the dumb things that it does is that at the end of the day, MLS does seem to care on some level about its product. It wants its product to be presented appropriately and professionally. And yeah, this is almost almost to a fault. Like you can, you can trace any number of storylines that are ongoing in American soccer and local soccer to this idea of how much MLS wants to control its image, control its product, control, the news coming out of its product and also how the product looks and how it's consumed uh, that goes over to why they dumped out of the U S open cup. It kind of goes into why the league's cup is being prioritized because you end up with this, where it's the CONCACAF champions cup league, whatever. Um, this is the revenue driver in other confederations uh, or federations around the world, you know, Everybody in Europe, you know, loses it over Champions League football. And over here, it's such an afterthought that the games are either on Tubi or on Fox Sports 2 and are immediately bumped off television to show a quarterfinal matchup of a basketball game from a conference that is not going to exist in 12 months. (laughs) Less than that, even. I think yeah. the Pac-12 will cease to exist this summer. Yeah, I think and, June June thirtieth. I think they're yeah. done. <laughs> and so that was that that game bumped the Concacaf Champions League between the Supporters Shield winners of MLS and the top club currently in Mexico. I believe. Yep. <laughs> it bumped by any measure two of the biggest soccer teams in. North America, it bumped it to an internet stream that didn't work. (laughs) (laughs) Where it was directing you to to go to the Fox Sports app that when you clicked on the game just had the same basketball game going. I mean, I guess we we should reset if you weren't watching this, you didn't stay up late for some reason. Uh, At about the what seventy first, seventy second minute, I want to say of this uh, CONCACAF Champions Cup match between FC Cincinnati and Monterey, just right after uh, Brandon Vasquez scores a tap-in goal on a break for Monterey, all of a sudden the feed dies for the match on television, and it cuts over to a Pac-12 tournament game between Utah and Colorado that was just about to tip off. Yeah. This was, beca- this was because on Fox Sports 1, Villanova and Marquette in the Big East uh, tournament. Big East absolutely heinously screwed by the NCAA tournament uh, selection committee today. Uh, rigged, tournament rigged, uh, <laughs> anti-Big East bias. Neither here nor there. But because that game went into overtime, then there wasn't a place for that Pac-12 game to tip off. And so instead of sending that to the internet like they sometimes do where you'll have to start watching a game on ESPN Plus or something, they just decided to cut the feed midway through for this game, which, yeah, sure, it was at that point three to one on aggregate, and FC Cincinnati would have needed to score two goals in order to come back and win it. But I mean, shit, stranger things have happened. There was still probably in excess of 20 to 25 minutes left in this game, and they were just like, nope, sorry, you're done here. <laughs> it was so weird without warning. 
like there was no like hey folks uh this game is about to to be moved to the app make sure you have the app available or or you know download like, nothing like not even a banner. I understand, like, you you might not want the commentator. I don't even think we had two commentators. Uh, not even, like, a banner. Like, this game is moving to whatever. Because you'll see that sometimes, that, like, this game is moving or in progress, whatever. Um, so strange. Just so strange to just be abruptly moved out of there. Um, just tells yeah. you all you need to know about the prestige and importance of this tournament and also... Probably the numbers that it draws. <laughs> <laughs> You'd think that, that we always hear about how good Liga MX does in the U.S. I mean, I'd, I'm sure the ratings weren't great for this, but you'd imagine it wasn't wouldn't be normal. Like Monterey game wouldn't be too far off this very random conference tournament game. But right, right. What do I know? <laughs> I'm the guy who wanted to watch the soccer game, so <laughs> maybe I'm biased. But yeah, it was absurd, and the fact that it didn't even work at all. Imagine, I mean, almost thank God that it wasn't closer, because like I oh. probably would have been absolutely losing. I was like half losing my shit, but half laughing because it's just the the absurdity. But like, there's this world where it was the greatest ending of all time, and we are being. <laughs> kept out of it for literally no reason. But, yeah, the Heidi game uh, part two. <laughs> yeah, right. God bless the stream, though, I guess. Yeah, thank God uh, Joseph Mamey was the hero to many, I think. He he was pretty liberal with his linking on uh, on Twitter. But yeah, <clears> definitely <throat> in the Discord, that was super, super helpful. Um, but yeah, just like Bupenza's bicycle kick happens like five minutes later, not even. And what if that went in? Like that's I, I, arguably like one of the greatest goals of in all time FCC history would have just been absolutely not seen by ninety nine percent of the fan base. It just can you imagine the, the number oh. of people losing their mind though if all of a sudden that goes in and this game that no one can find, no one can watch, <laughs> is all of a sudden two three two on aggregate with FCC just needing one goal in the last ten minutes of this game to advance, setting up for just. A frantic finish that no one can watch, and it almost was that. Yeah, it almost was. It was. It was about like I don't know, ten inches away from that being the case. Like, wasn't there a Santos penalty shout too? Probably. I honestly, someone said there was a good shout for him to get a penalty, and that wasn't in the match Mm. uh, recap that I watched. The bicycle kick was, but nice. We'll never know. It's lost. (laughs) It's lost the time. (laughs) It's so. yeah, uh, game had the game had everything, including me calling for them to pull the starters off right about <laughs> five minutes before we we leveled. Chief Chief was ready to push all of his eggs into the win in New England basket and just wanted nothing to do with the rest of this game uh, as soon as the first goal was conceded. But I, this game I, was kind of the best that we've seen for FC Cincinnati this season, so, I think. So let's 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 start with this then, or why don't we've started a long start. time? Ago. Let's 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 move with We're this. About a half hour in. Let us begin. Right. <laughs> let's 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 go with this. Were you as surprised as I was that they went for it in this game, down one at one nil on aggregate, um, and playing against a team the caliber of Monterey? I thought we'd see a little more squad rotation in this game, and then bring on the big guns if there was still a reasonable chance of success in the second half i don't know was i was i guess that's my bias showing that i just didn't expect him to win this game and like if i don't expect him to win i don't expect any of them to think they can win but i i for certain thought that we were going to see a little bit of, of people being rested in this game i didn't i hadn't thought about it that deeply i was just watched that first game thinking you know at, at the very least we equally played them on a generous reading, if you take away the goals, we outplayed them. I knew it was going to be way different in uh, Mexico. But I was thinking at the end of today's game when they said, 30 more games to go, though, in the season or something, I was like, all oh, right, there's so many fucking games. <laughs> so, like, for that, for me, like, if New England was going to be a schedule loss for this, like, to, like, see what we're really capable of against maybe the best team in North America, it seemed like a worthy goal. And for the first 10 minutes... 
usually it's like the opposite. That was always my thing. Like we came out a little slow. First time it's like we fucking rule. <laughs> it was like so good. <laughs> and then you're like, uh, he was like, yeah, they got to. That's what you used to say with the Bengals. They got to play us. You know, <laughs> it was like we got good players too. And then like they got a foothold, and it was like, all right, hold on, everybody, hold on. <laughs> but uh, like, yeah, yeah, the beginning though, you had to feel amazing. You know that just like we looked better and it was like we're gonna score luca was going 90 miles an hour and like <laughs> it just looked like our destiny to make it a fantastic game so unfortunately it didn't work out that way but yeah i think we justified pat at least at the beginning like yeah we can actually we could do this yeah i i think it's the combination of we did look like the better team at home and sure lots of mls teams do that but if we look really bad and we're lucky to get away with one nothing then maybe you do change your tune a little bit in mexico so the fact that we played them so close then the other part is like like nine teams in the eastern conference will make the playoffs and i have zero doubts that fcc could rotate their entire squad for half of the games and make the playoffs like i'm not worried about that at all with this roster and this coaching staff so there's like unless you were truly of the belief that the end of the season will come down to us in New England for like the last playoff spot or something there is nothing to hold in reserve at this point in the season that you can't pick up elsewhere in the year like this is this is the game that matters the New England game is not the one that mattered of the You're, two this is the numbers though that i saw yes <laughs> i think on match day that are just these almost seem made up, but I, I was staggered by them. I'm just going to read them right Please. here. Um, and this was before this weekend's con- – this was before Thursday night's games. This was going into the game with uh, Monterey. Yeah. MLS uh, was, it is 5, 58, and 14 <laughs> in competitive games playing at Mexican opposition. That's Damn. absurd. <laughs> Five fucking wins out of <laughs> what? 63, 70, 77 games out of 77 games played between MLS and Liga MX games in Mex- teams in Mexico. They've won five. <laughs> Man, almost six. FCC put it to them. <laughs> right. So MLS teams are 13 and 49 overall in two leg series versus Mexican opposition. And if you just reduce that down to when the schedule has the second leg being in Mexico, yeah. teams are five and 31. Like, yeah, that's the thing. Like, I guess the best case scenario in Montreal there or in Monterey, excuse me, uh, was a draw because <laughs> a multi-goal draw would have had us advancing. So yeah. Tying two to two or three to three would have been a win, quote unquote, for FCC. Um, damn. I mean, just it just it puts into perspective. So when I said like just pull the starters after they went down one nil, it's just the odds of them. It would have been seismic for this FC Cincinnati team to have gone into Mexico and won a game. Like you're talking about putting the team in incredibly rarefied air in an MLS and. A win in this game would very much have been a, does this FC Cincinnati team have the goods to become one of the greatest MLS teams of all time? Like, that is that is what you're talking about if they would have gone into Monterey and beaten them head up on Monterey's turf. Okay. That's, what they were, that's what they were up against. And if they would have done that, and, you know, they acquitted themselves well. So then, hypothetical, could they have done it with Obi? You wonder. <laughs> like I forgot he wasn't out there. You put Obi yeah. in for Kubo. You let Kubo be your super sub later in the game. I'm not saying there's a, a direct moment in the game that it was Kubo's fault even or anything like that, but does this game look different with Wobodo out there instead? Or how about, how about this is a thought experiment? The, do they win this team if Brandon Vasquez – they win this game if Brandon Vasquez is playing for us instead of Monterey? Brandon Vasquez this year. <laughs> yeah, Brandon Vasquez, Vasquez this year. Last yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> if, if you just jersey swapped Brandon Vasquez for this game and put him on FC Cincinnati in his current run of form, 
and took him away from Monterey. <laughs> I think we win if they just bench him. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't even think we need him. <laughs> what if he swap Moreno for Pavel? <laughs> How do we do that? Oh, man. <laughs> Too soon. Sorry. <laughs> How's Moreno doing in Saudi Arabia or Qatar, wherever he went? I don't remember. 30 goals. Some, no, oil, some <laughs> oil state. His bank account's doing just fine. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> That's the important thing here. Yeah. Oh, rules. man. <laughs> um so loved Lucho's goal yeah. in this game. I thought that was that was incredible. Um spoiler alert, that's going to be a topic of conversation <laughs> here in the next game that we recap. Uh the the fact they stayed in this game was big and then once they once they got back into it and leveled everything 1-1, then it became throw everything at Monterey. You quite literally have nothing to lose yeah. by pushing all in and then they get undressed with Vasquez getting an absolute tap in goal. That 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 was so wide open that when he taps the ball in there even the keeper isn't in frame. <laughs> it was just you could see the entirety of the goal and Vasquez was the only person there. I don't believe we've ever scored a goal that was that wide open. Am I misremembering anything, Kevin? Uh the only thing I can think of is Bupenza against Philly in the preseason, but <laughs> All right, yeah. Okay, there we go. That's that's the one. Um I don't know. I um yeah, the team. I the thought team was they incredible. looked good. Yeah, yeah, they they looked really good. That's the that's far and away the best team they will play all year, and it won't even be close what number two is, um, unless they run into Monterey or maybe Club America in League's Cup. They're not going to play a team that's better than what they saw there. I thought they played well, and true to my word, you know, I wasn't mad at the loss. I thought that was they. Over the two legs of that uh, series, I thought they acquitted themselves really, really, really well. Maybe the most frustrating thing is the fact that we did play Monterey, and had we gotten almost anyone else in particular, some of these MLS on MLS legs that uh, Miami and Columbus were gifted, um, we'd be talking about a team in in the, the quarterfinals, the semifinals. That would have been really, really fun. So That's I, not I've... what we get. I have two questions for the group then. Question number one, is Brandon Vasquez dead to us now, officially? He has to Two be. goals in two matches? I, I, we've all been like following him at Monterey and every goal. It's like he's, we're scoring two. <laughs> I do feel like uh, that's not going to be the, uh, this. I don't feel the same <laughs> passion <laughs> for, his, uh, <laughs> for his goal scoring prowess. And there's really nothing, you know, he didn't do anything totally <laughs> right. to draw the ire. You know, he flopped around a little bit like a center forward does to win calls. But you just like, I don't know. It's just, I guess it's the natural thing. You give him a little bit, you get excited. Then when it's in your face, you know, I, I'm not saying they should have sent him somewhere else. It's just, it's kind of crazy that it ended up the way yeah. it goes there and then we immediately play them in the champions cup like what were the fucking odds of that but uh yeah i'm a little sour they really Spoiler for my out of the whatever segment you know <laughs> <laughs> they really should have saved it for the uh the league's cup group and <laughs> thrown us in i don't think seeding wise or whatever that was actually possible but it could have been fun no, the only thing is uh, I'm still aggrieved on behalf of Vasquez every time he's not caught up to the U.S. men's national team. Um, but that's that's about the extent of my following right. his uh, his career there. Would have been nice if the roster rules would have permitted us to, you know, buy a Vasquez replacement instead of having Sergio Santos. Uh, would have been yeah. would have been helpful for yeah. this match. Um, so question two, then. We are now, uh, we're now out of this tournament. Do you care who wins the CONCACAF Champions Cup at this point? I, I do, but I'm always that guy. Like, the reason why I had, <laughs> I said Montreal, not Monterey, as I was remembering in, like, is it 2016, 2015? Where Montreal somehow made the final and tied in Mexico and took it back to Montreal with everything to play for and lost horribly in the final. Just That was a Drogba game, wasn't it? I think so. I think Drogba, yeah. that was like the last I think time I watched Drogba the, played. I think I watched that last game. And they yeah, moved I it to, to see... the Olympic Stadium and yes. had like 60,000 people weird. there. It was a wild <laughs> yeah. game. <Yeah. laughs> I mean, I want to see uh, 
you know, Inter Miami play Monterey. I mean, I'm intrigued. I'll yeah. watch it in passing. I do not have a sporting interest. I either want to see like Monterey destroy them or oddly Miami destroy them. <laughs> like I kind of want like Liga MX to get it stuck to them. But you also want Miami to get it stuck to them. So that's kind of a win-win for me. So whichever whoever comes out of there, then hopefully whoever comes out of there loses the next game, unless it's versus like Columbus or something. I don't know I, what the brackets are. It'll like. probably I, be against Columbus. It's Columbus yeah. Tigres is the other side of that. Yeah. I'd take Miami over Columbus. I um I have this weird sicko thing that I really want to see Messi win this just because it makes all the right people angry online. <laughs> like it makes that's where I've I've been reduced to in terms of my online interaction is that I just I now root for outcomes that make the worst people upset. And I when I find myself agreeing with terrible people, it causes me to rethink my takes and I don't like <laughs> rethinking my takes. The the only thing I care about in this tournament from this point forward is I don't care just for the love of Christ Columbus can't win this, right? That's just that would be that would be morally devastating for me personally as a FC Cincinnati fan. See them claim another trophy ahead of us. Yeah. I mean, we've we've talked a lot of shit about Miami, but I think we're all in agreement. We'd rather see Miami win this versus Columbus, right? Like if I hope Miami if it's yeah. if it ever comes to Miami versus Columbus, I hope they beat him by 30. Like I, Right. <laughs> I hope I hope they cor- they 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 issue a coronation of Messi as the MVP at halftime of this game. Like Yeah. But that, Jonah brings up a good point. Chief, who are you rooting for then? Montreal, Miami. Like, what's, the, what's the play? Wait, Mo- Montreal or Miami? <laughs> or, sorry, Miami? Monterey. Yeah. I did it again. Jesus, Jesus, what is I going- did it again. <laughs> Gaslight me. <laughs> <but> things- <laughs> you did and just my- talk about Montreal at least. So, you know. <laughs> who am I rooting that's for, fair. Monterey or Columbus? Oh, my God. That's no, easy no, 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 no. Miami. The next level. Oh, Miami. Miami. Okay. Oh, jeez. I will be the biggest messy stand during that game. I might live tweet it talking about the goat. <laughs> this is why he's the goat. I'll just like start, I'll start mentioning Ronaldo accounts just to get involved in the mentions. It'd be pretty annoying if Vasquez scored against Miami though, after like not <laughs> offering much help last year, but I don't know. Something to think about. I like, I think for FCC to look as good as possible, Montreal, I did it again. <laughs> Monterey. Jesus. <laughs> what is the matter? Just go with it. <laughs> they wear blue and white. Come on, this is not my fault. Um, they speak Rayad, a foreign language. Yeah. Rayad de? Rayadez. Rayadez. Just if. Rayadez. If, <laughs> if right. Monterey can beat Miami by 5 nothing on aggregate, that makes FCC look so good looking back. Like, wow, they played them so tough. Like, that was a real nail biter. And Monterey just took MLS's best <clears throat> team to the woodshed. Like, damn, that really says something. That's all I root for is like, what makes my team look the best? Like, I'm, unless I have true bad feelings, like when my team is knocked out in a knockout tournament, I need that team to win it all. Cause then you think, ah, oh, well, all right. So we got beat by the best team in the tournament. Something to be said for that. You don't want to get beat by the team that then immediately gets blown out. That just makes your team look even worse. I don't know. I I'm I, uh, I'm with you on no, this. Go ahead, Chief. No, I'm, I agree. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that, was all I had. that was all I had. I'm with you on this. I was gonna say for as good as we looked, you know, for the you know stops and starts, we looked really good. I don't think our team is really good yet. We just have like we got really good players in the back line. We have Lucho. We have Luca every now and then, <laughs> but I think this team firing, I, you know, we, that's one of the things they always said is that the Liga MX teams are more into their season. You know, it's kind of a crutch we use to feel better about MLS teams losing, but yeah, there's some truth to it, but you know, we're into the season at this point. There shouldn't be many excuses, but still, I think FCC at the midway point of this season, just my hunch will be even like better and I would hope so. Firing on all cylinders, maybe a striker scoring goals. Mm-hmm. So I think we're not going to meet them again. But if we meet them again, I guess you said League's Cup is possible. We'll see how much we care about it. But uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, if we can do this with just kind of the makeshift good FCC they were right now, I'm feeling I'm feeling positive. I'm feeling hopeful. Yeah, excited. 
I think, et cetera. I think you have to feel positive, for, as positive as you can feel after a loss. Let's, let's be clear. Disappointing to lose this game. Um, it is nice to get the two matches a week out of the way. I, I think for the rest of the season, like – I'm I'm sure there's a handful of Wednesday games, don't get me wrong, but between this and the Open Cup and a break for the League's Cup, like I think I think we're good for a good long while here. So on yeah. that front, thank you, FCC. I appreciate right? having <laughs> a little bit of my life back. <laughs> um Is there anything else from this game before we transition to the one we, we just watched earlier today? Lucho Costa, great goal. Should be should be noted. That yeah. if they would have won this game, that would have been an all timer in FC Cincinnati history. But as it stands, just Lucho doing Lucho things, and it was really, really cool to watch. Yeah, damn. Um, I just looked it up real fast. Uh we have like two May Wednesday games and like two in July, and that's basically it. Cool. Fuck. I'm I'm boycotting this team. <laughs> yeah. Boycott Wednesday matches. This thing that we were promised, which is only <laughs> Saturdays. Free my weekdays. <laughs> Finally, a protest. Down uh, with day drinking. Wait, what? <laughs> wait a second. Uh, but no, then uh, the team has to turn around immediately. It's got to be one of the longest return legs uh, from a uh, the midweek games to the, uh, to the weekend games. Uh, flying all the way over to New England. Uh, Obi does not even make the 18 and a heavily rotated squad from the midweek match takes the can we, field. Can we, can we talk about like this travel? I mean, they traveled from Monterey directly to Boston. I, I don't even know how long of a flight that is. It sounds very long. Apparently they didn't arrive in Boston until nine in the morning Oof. on Friday. Oof. They were saying on the broadcast that they didn't have enough players that were like awake to do their training drills. So they had the coaches out there participating with the players. So somewhere there's footage of Kenny arena and Pat Noonan <laughs> out chopping it up. And I need to know, were they gray team or were they green team? <laughs> that, oh, that's good info. The, uh, it does remind me if of the, uh... somebody out there has the answer to this question. And I need to know, with who was repping who in this? And that person's name is Carter. And the reason why we won't get the answer is FCC is suppressing this information from the free press. They won't let <laughs> us know. Um, you know, remember when uh, Yap Stom would apparently, and his coaching staff would get like two footed tackles into guys in training? Like they were just reliving their glory days, and that's how they did training during the Stom era. You know, honestly, if. <laughs> For as bad as those teams were, if Yap would have just called his own number and added himself to the active roster, I can't imagine it would have been worse. Man. (laughs) Better or worse than Tyler Blackett? There's no chance he was worse. There's no chance. (laughs) Wow. Wow. Fuck. Forgot he played for us. (laughs) (laughs) Man, we've had some. (laughs) And we'd get so excited, too. We're like, oh, shit. Tyler Blackett. Like, every name. We just get so excited. Uh, Tyler Blackett played under Pat Newton. So that's a fun one to think about for a half a season. Resigned. Resigned. That's right. They extended his. They extended him for the full season in 2022 because they, they couldn't get the Miazga deal done in time. That's they had to wait till the dead to the window ended. Damn. You signed to Rotherham. Well, yeah, I'm sure I, they're doing great. I don't. I can't sit, I can't think of any situation where I'd rather have him. So. Hey, 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 well done. Bam. <laughs> oh. Hell yeah. So. This New England game, the lineup yeah. comes out. It's it's heavily rotated. Yu Yu Kubo back at left wing back. I won't do the full lineup, but just just a couple. Do the of full lineup. Let's 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 hear the full lineup. Let's okay. do it. Okay, it's been a give while. it to me. Give it to me. Roman Salentano in goal. Uh, your back line from left to right: Kip Keller, Matt Miazga, Miles Robinson, Yu Yu Kubo. Your left wing back: DeAndre Yedlin. Your right wing back. Your midfield duo was Pavel Buka and Malik Pinto. Ahead of them, two other attacking midfielders, off- offense players, uh, Baird <laughs> and Valenzuela, with ahead of them, 
Sergio Santos. And the reason why I'm being weird and hesitating here <laughs> is that this is not in any way how they typically display the lineup graphics for FCC. This was a very clear Santos as the front line. Valenzuela and Baird are deeper with Buca and Pinto even deeper than that in the midfield. Chief, is this our first, I don't know, lineup change in the Pat Noonan era since the disastrous outing at uh, at Austin? I mean, isn't this what we talked about all offseason? Was that the name of the game with the players they were acquiring this year was positional flexibility and formational flexibility? And I know Grayson kind of, you know, poo-pooed the idea when he was signed, but this was kind of where Corey Baird's value was. If there was, if you were going to say Corey Baird was an impact signing, um, this was part of the, the, the point, the talking points on that was that you could drop him back into the midfield. You could have him playing as the, the number 10, take some pressure off Dotto. They said over and over in the broadcast, they made it very clear, and I'm sure that was because Pat Noonan played this up at their pre-broadcast uh, meetings on Saturday, that they were playing with two people in the number 10 role, that they were attempting to generate more offense by having two midfield, attacking midfield options with Baird and Valenzuela, and that tells me they viewed Baird as a midfielder in this match. So yeah, I, I think that it it's a sign of Noonan evolving a little bit as a manager, and we're taking advantage of the fact that, okay, we can, you know, rotate the squad and we can, tr we aren't, we aren't rigidly stuck in our, our formation and our, our formula. There are other ways that we can play and play successfully with the pieces we have out there. I kind of like it. Jonah, uh, Valenzuela gets the start as many of us have been demanding. <laughs> yes. Does Lucha Free get his data. starting job back? <laughs> <laughs> He offers some things that Lucho can't. He's taller. Um, <laughs> True. <laughs> younger. What else? What he is younger. Um, He's more American for the time being. For the time being. Yeah. <laughs> Dotto is easier for a baby to say. So he's got that going. Many, many, baby, many babies. First player words. If we're. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's from Boca Raton, which is fun. Um, yeah, I don't know. I was, of course, excited. You, you, when you're looking at it, and when you're reading it, all I was thinking was like, that's a pretty good back line. It's, you can almost put anything in front of that and we'll be okay. Yeah. The question is, could they like generate anything? And it looked like people that had no chemistry. With, you know, <laughs> there wasn't a lot to, there's a, you know, this is was one of Alan Koch's failings when he thought he could just switch formations every game and throw anyone out there. It's like you need a little consistency, a little, a little something, whatever. And I'm not jumping ahead by saying you knew whenever Lucho came on, it was going to be like what was the game, the Vancouver game, or one of these games. Well, the Chicago where he comes game on last late. year, where he came in in like the second just half like and just immediately instantly. Changed the game. You're like, and he not sometimes he's doing spectacular things. You're like, wow, only Lucho. This one, he just like turning and burning and right. like in your head it's like it looks like something someone else could do but for some reason they can't and yeah i was extremely excited for Dado. this is like what we do when we have limited information on someone yep kimi for example in the past you get to build him up however you want he had that great goal assisted by lucho versus uh cavalier, cavalier. yeah yeah so He's only given us good things, and you're waiting for him to get more than two minutes where he can actually try. And unfortunately, I don't know, nothing really came off for him. I wouldn't say he was horrible, but he, he didn't really get a chance to show off very much and um, a worthy substitute <laughs> at halftime. But uh, they seem to really like him, so it's not going to be the end of the Dotto experiment. But uh, yeah, I was a little sad he wasn't able to do something a little more creative when he finally got his big break. Yeah. I. Like, I kind of want to see the same formation again, but with Obi, Lucho, Bupenza, and Oriano, because then, then I think we got yeah. something. I think that's interesting that at that point. Here's the problem, though, with like why I'm not going to shit all over <clears throat> Dotto or anyone that was playing in the attack. Um, They look disjointed. And... 
I think Wait, watching... hang on. You said you're not going to shit on anyone in the attack? Can I make no, an I said, exception for no, one no, no, player? No, 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 no. I didn't okay. say I'm not going to shit on Dada. I'm not going to okay. shit on Dada. Okay. I'm not going to okay. shit on Dada okay. 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 specifically. <laughs> Dada specifically. No, no, no. Hold on here. I'm not going to shit on Dada specifically. They look disjointed in the attack. And the, the reason I think that was is that Sergio Santos's performance <laughs> in <go>. this game <laughs> was the worst performance by an FC Cincinnati player I think this team has had since probably Cody, 2019, Cody 20, yeah, t- 2019, 2020. That was awful. Like, I'm, I'm out of, I've wanted this guy off the team for a while. And I've been told, oh, the striker depth is not strong enough. I don't care at this point. I have a hard time believing whoever is on FCC2 or someone that you're getting out of the USL, I have a hard time believing that those players would be worse at less money than Santos is making because, good God, it was awful in the first half and it somehow became worse in the second half. I I don't understand how that's possible. (laughs) He did have that side volley that wasn't too far off. I remember he had one. That was his his moment of the game. It was <laughs> about as good as you could get from him. I was like, hey, that had a chance. Beyond Directly that, at the uh, keeper, yeah. side volley, neat. I, uh, mm. I think I tweeted from the post, like, this is the best Sergio Santos has looked his whole time <laughs> with FCC, including goals. Like, right after that sister kick. <laughs> it's like, oh wait, nope. That was that was as good as it got for the entire. Game. I, I'm, I am. Look, I know we've said that. Okay, he's probably a great teammate and a great locker room guy, just because of the number of people that tweet when he left Philly, how much that they were, how bad it was that they were losing him. But I just, I don't understand. He is, he's. They, they spotlighted him in the pregame of this game. The broadcast team did about the importance of getting Sergio Santos going. And I was just laughing the entire time because like, do these people, have they watched Sergio Santos play? This person hasn't been going in the entire time he's been with this club. If he gets going, it will be for the first time ever. He has that volley that goes straight at the keeper and is stopped with minimal effort and then proceeds to spend the rest of the game. He doesn't make any runs at all that look threatening. When he does make runs, for a guy that we, we say his speed is a, is a game changer, I've never seen him outrun anyone. I mean, have we seen him outrun someone to a ball? I, I, I don't think I've seen it. And no. then there were multiple times in this game where, you know, FCC was, uh, was absorbing pressure a little bit. They were letting New England play with the ball and looking to counter. But then when they would get on the counter, Santos wouldn't crash the goal. He wouldn't make himself available for a run. There was at least once where Yedlin was screaming towards goal, and it was a three-on-three break. And Santos, instead of attacking the goal and looking for a pass-through, pulls up, gets behind Yedlin. So Yedlin has to make an awkward pass back to him, and then it's not on the, the, the foot he wants to shoot on, and they don't even get a chance out of it because he's being passive in the attack. I just... I don't understand what he's bringing to this team right now. And then you get into the second half where he plays one of the worst balls back backwards I've seen in a while that has no chance of getting back to one of his own players. It's immediately picked up by New England. It leaves Miazga in an awful 1v1 situation in the dead center of the field where he has to cover both directions simultaneously. And it's an easy goal that is directly Santos' fault. It was pass after pass that was missed. It was no threat being offered. I was, if they would have cut him on the field, I would have, I would have applauded. (laughs) I don't get it. Someone make make it make sense. (laughs) His agent comes down from the stands, starts pleading. (laughs) I was like, wait, 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 wait. Uh, I wish, yeah, I mean, who's on the bench today? Like, I'd have rather seen history? Evan Loro playing striker. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wish I hadn't seen so much of uh, Kimi. Right. I'd be like, where? Why is it Kimi getting his chance? And then, like, you see Kimi get his chance, like, okay, uh, all right, I, 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 I got it. <laughs> glad we glad we cleared that up. But he's definitely trying things for sure. He's not out there not trying right. things. Also, and I do 
the second half, I remember Lucho like on the on the wing, like trying to cut in. There's no one in the box to cross to. Like his only option was to take some ridiculous shot or to like hold it up. I'm like, why do we have three people at the corner of the right. 18 yard box right here? There's nobody in there. Um, yeah, there wasn't a lot doing, but God bless Lucho, anyways. Yeah. But yeah, Santos. Um, I, I did he, he got the pass to Vasquez. You know, that's <laughs> right. in the playoffs. For that one moment that's, in the playoffs. He's, he's, he's living off that. He came in the super sub. He ran down the side quickly. Yeah, I will say for being the fastest guy, one of the fastest guys in the league, he doesn't feel like <laughs> one of the fastest guys in the league. He do, doesn't pass the vibe check. But uh, it's one of those things, if you keep saying it, I'm, we're going to regurgitate it because they keep telling us how fast he is, and you just got to believe it, honestly. So we should start. Who should we start saying something about until it's like, like Pavel... Pavel Buka Bucha, he's the strongest guy on, on oh, the yeah. team. Like he can he can out bench press everyone. Yes. So we'll just or, we'll just start saying that, and then eventually that's just gospel. Or, like yeah, then, he's Luca so strong. Or, Luca Oriano is the smartest player on this team. Ooh, Luca Oriano, yeah. genius level intellect. <laughs> just Lucho's asking him for advice. <laughs> yeah, that that he, you can tell that this person's going to be different as he gets more experience because he just he understands the game at a level that very few players ever do at such a young age. If you just keep repeating that, eventually that'll be true. God. That that He's, like we saw Santos get run down by uh it was Henry Kessler in this one who in fairness is like a 25-year-old, but like Santos' whole thing is supposed to be speed and uh once the center backs are beating him in foot races, it's it's over, man. Like that's unless it's mascara I think he might have been actually the fastest guy. That's true, team. actually. Fair enough. Yeah, at uh, some point, I'm going to need to see a foot race or 40 times <laughs> before before I keep repeating this anymore. Like, I feel like Oriano's faster than Santos, and I don't, I'm not even sure I need to see a foot race at this moment. I think DeAndre Yedlin's probably faster <laughs> than him, too. Yeah, probably. Well, he's known for being fast, at least, or was. Yeah. yeah. He's just getting a little older. Do you remember when Lukaku was on United and people were shitting on him? Like, there was... Like whispers coming out that he's like not fit enough or he's too slow or whatever. Yeah. And he released like a private team. Like they had like timed all the players and he was like faster than Luke Shaw. And like, <laughs> they, like he like tweeted out that, or like sent out there like he's basically like, look at this. Like I'm fucking faster right. than everybody. So go talk. I'm going to shit on my own teammates to show you. Right. If I'm so, slow, uh, what are these guys? <laughs> yeah. Um, I I did get curious. FCC two did play today uh, for, for whatever it's worth. I thought this was interesting. Uh, the goal was not scored by any of the starters, uh, scored by a, a right midfielder. Uh, but both of the strikers, uh, Cassiano and uh, Stitz, Ben Stitz has been around for a while. Neither one of them, so the game ends 1-1. So in MLS Next Pro, they, they go to penalties to determine a winner because MLS can't do anything normal. Um, neither one of the strikers took penalties. And... Chicago Fire tapping. won. Tapping merchants. <laughs> right. <laughs> but but they don't even tap them in. So, like, apparently they suck. It's from one game, this is what I'm choosing to believe. They might be great, but not not a great look in the uh, in the reserves. And our unused bench, by the way, was the aforementioned Evan Leroux. Uh, but Nick Haglin, Brett Halsey, Alvis Powell. Not exactly striker material, but come on. You're telling me Nick Haglin I couldn't be a target up there? I um I desperately want Pavel Buka is the strongest player on the team. Oh, yeah. Oriano is genius level intellect. I need that take to just keep being repeated. <laughs> Big East Twitter successfully got the rumor started that Tyler Kolek from Marquette is illiterate. And that, <laughs> that it caused the the sports information director, the SID of Marquette, to actually refute the claim online. <laughs> and it caused Tyler Pollock to post his GPA. But like the power of the internet is undefeated when it comes to drawing, driving narrative. Um, Use ha hashtag post facts when you're tweeting about it, please. Yes. <laughs> Free facts. <laughs> so uh, this game is yeah. this was a dreadfully dull first half, it was but awful. this was a a sonambulant first half, which is fine <laughs> with the amount of firepower they had on the bench. It was it was okay. You figured that at some point, you know, the stars were going to show up. And uh, boy, did they ever in the second half where uh, Luca Oriano and Lucho Acosta are subbed on. And I think within a minute and 30 seconds, uh, <laughs> Luca has scored his first goal 
off an incredible assist from Lucio Acosta that was taken back because fucking Sergio Santos. <laughs> Sergio Santos <laughs> hanging out at midfield <clears throat> just over the line, which is even more frustrating than if he just been on you can't be offside in your own half of the field i don't know if people know that but that's just a thing if he had just been right over the line it would have been perfectly fine just so frustrating what i really hated about that though was just how long after the play it took them to raise the flag like i i feel like conspiracy theory because i think officiated remotely there's no chance is. that that that's AR what's saw happening that. that's what's happening is that Pro has direct feeds to ARs and center referees, and they are just calling these games from the booth and telling these guys what to do. Like, I don't know what Absolutely. else. I don't know what else there is to this. Like, that's what's happening here. That they're they're already checking the goal as soon as it's scored, and they're going back and they're looking at it, and because there's no way in real time if the AR sees that the flag goes up immediately. Yeah. Like as soon as the first touch happens, that flag is up. There is no chance whatsoever. That it, the AR let that all play through and then got back and decided, oh, no, you're in, in hindsight, I was letting it all play out to see what happened. Like a like, full that's... celebration, the multiple look backs, the high fives, the slow walk back to the midfield, and then, in the, like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, it, it, so because the offside was on Santos being uh, lazy, like, like hanging out in an offside position. He comes back to play the ball back to Lucho and the flag stays down. Lucho then advances the ball all the way upfield with the flag staying down, passes off to Oriano with the flag staying down. Oriano scores the goal. They celebrate with the flag still down. And then only then does the flag go up. This wasn't a, oh, let's see how this play develops mm -hmm. and like give the, a, the VAR a chance to check. This was full-on bullshit. Just, ugh, I don't know. Maybe if he supported unions. <laughs> You're silently protesting this. You can feel that they're replacement refs, but also like the calls themselves, like throughout the game, don't feel drastically different enough for me to care. But it's just like everything feels a little more out of control or a little bit like topsy turvy because I think what you're saying is true that they are like getting help. Like it's so yeah. they're kind of tethered a little bit, but it's it just feels a little more. I've seen MLS games before with the old refs get out of hand, but like everything is like slightly more frantic. And then obviously this guy's giving out yellow cards like <laughs> Halloween candy. But <laughs> before that, yeah, it, it's, there's there should. I know they go back that far to look at him, but yes, if it's not called on the field and there's not something egregious, he was off sides. But yeah, it was it felt harsh. Yeah, and for Luca, oh, <laughs> give the, the man a goal. The, the problem though is that with the replacement refs when they when regular refs in mls suck you just say the refs suck and there's nothing to do about it when the replacement refs suck it's the replacement refs suck we should bring back the other refs but like i won't make that step because i know the other refs suck just as badly i just i don't care <laughs> the, the, nothing yeah. about watching this game felt any different than any mls game i have ever watched because also in those games we have refs that, you know, spam yellow cards like Stone Cold hitting the stunner when he gets to the ring or like, you know, awful offside calls that take forever and ruin the moment and ruin the celebration. That's all happens when the regular refs are there. So I just, I just don't I'm not bothered by it. I'm more bothered by the idea that the rule makes that an offside when you are returning back to your you're not advancing and gaining an advantage. You are coming back from the offside position. That shouldn't matter. You're going the wrong direction. That should wave the flag off as far as I'm concerned. You're passing the ball backwards. <laughs> yeah. It, it's a dumb rule. I, I hate the rule more than I hate the ruling. Yeah, like the defense has plenty of time to reset, to organize. Like it's not like an unfair advantage was, was gained here. Uh, not too long after that, we do get a goal that is attributed to you, Yakubo. One of the most bizarre goals awarded I've, I've yeah. seen. Just like the... quote unquote goal. I'm still not. I never saw the, <laughs> the totally convincing angle. I'm gonna be no. honest with you. And even the announcers were like, "Oh, there it is, definitively." It's like I was like, "What? No. What? Who? <laughs> no." <laughs> like I appreciate it if they don't call that a goal. If that linesman doesn't call it a goal on the field, yeah. well, unless fucking a birdie whispered in his ear, I don't think you can go back 
they review that, I don't think they had a convincing enough angle to call it a goal. So thank God this right. time that guy <laughs> says he saw it. I mean, it very well could have, but they didn't show us a single replay that was totally convincing. And the fact we don't have the goal line technology <laughs> remains absurd. <laughs> feels it like feels an like, easy thing yeah, to do. It feels like if you knew your reps were going to go on strike, you would have fast tracked just buying that technology. <laughs> I I understand people say like it requires like the stadiums to have it. Not all MLS stadiums can have it, and that's why they don't. How is the technology not built into the goal itself? Like I don't know how the technology works. I understand they probably have like lasers or all a over the field along the line. Yeah, yeah, just like put a camera in there, right? Like <laughs> at the goalpost, a GoPro. Right? Like, <laughs> just, use the same thing that stops the elevator door for cl- from closing. <laughs> if it has your hand right there, that's in every building now. Just. Put that in the goal, right? <laughs> I mean, make the entire airplane out of the black box. It should be easy. <laughs> yeah, just stick your foot. <laughs> Tell over me, the Lut- Luton Town can have goal line technology, but there's MLS stadiums <laughs> that can't. I refuse to believe that that has any possibility. And, and it, the stadium is Yankee Stadium, right? Like we can all agree that like they yeah. use goal line technology in the NFL, so it's not any of the NFL stadiums. It's not any of the soccer stadiums. It's New York City. They've Son got all the bitch. money. Like, surely they can invest in this. But yeah, they've like, got they've got that shit. When you watch tennis, where it tells you within like a millimeter yeah. where the ball landed, you can't install that in an MLS stadium to say if the ball crossed the, the goal line. Really? Like a tennis stadium, small. Like I don't know. This is so weird know. that it can't. It can't work. I mean, not to sit here and complain about a call that awarded us that a goal, way. but <laughs> just weird. I will I will say, if you go back and watch the replay, absolutely love the commitment from Yuya Kubo. His hand does not leave the pole of the goal until the awarded goal shows up on the scoreboard. Only then does he let go of the goal and yeah, walk chain away. Him, chain himself <laughs> to the goal in protest. I think he was ready to. <laughs> What a Yu Yakubo goal, too, for all like the outside <laughs> shots and his having that incredible desire to shoot from distance. His first goal of the year, his first goal in forever. I think this is this is his first goal since the Inter Miami Open Cup game, right? That feels right. Yeah. Yeah, let's yeah. go with that. <laughs> and his first goal since that is this looping header that may have gone in, but sure. <laughs> yeah. Couldn't he have turned more? towards the goal <laughs> i need to watch the replay i was like why didn't he just was it in the goal right there or was he like trying to avoid the po- the post I, I don't I need, know I need like if you do again. look at it in to to chief's uh we'll say bemusement here uh it does look like he's trying to head the ball at the goalie it's like yeah <laughs> what are we doing here <laughs> there's, there's a lot of goal he could have headed it towards and he absolutely does not so I respect the commitment, but Jesus Christ. I can't explain it. Uh, thankfully, though, I'm I'm choosing to believe that at a minimum, this was a makeup call for how weird the, the VAR call ended up being. Well, not VAR. Sorry. Excuse me. The offside call yeah. was. <laughs> okay. So Kubo, I'm watching the, I'm watching the replay right here. Yeah. K- Kubo is. I <laughs> He's. Yeah, he's right in front of the goal. There's the, the, there's so much more goal to shoot at. <laughs> the, the keeper His body's out of bounds. Yeah. <laughs> like there's this. <laughs> Hold on, I'm gonna send this in the group chat right here. I've got this frozen at the exact right moment right here. This is. Hold on. Please. I don't understand what he is aiming for right here. Like it's almost like he's passing it back to somebody else. Yeah, I don't like know back if he's across the goal. I don't know that he's trying to score from here. That is. It is very strange. It might, like, I guess it makes sense, like, in the heat of the moment. But, man, when you look at it, the here, state this... of the play. <laughs> yeah, look at this. Like, right here, as soon as he hits this, where this ball is going right here. <laughs> That's after he's hit it. <laughs> it's like he's pa- he's passing it to the defender, it looks like. He could have just played it off of his chest and walked it into the yeah. goal. <laughs> like, what are you doing? His buddy? one foot is in the goal. <laughs> like... Oh, I mean, uh, good on him. He, they, they all count the same, but man, he he increased the degree of difficulty on that routine for the judges. I was almost an all time miss. Yeah, like the keeper gets a hand to it, like just slightly faster reaction time. It's not a close call. No, not. <laughs> it's unbelievable, is what it is. Uh, but thankfully, but but a few minutes after that, Lucho Acosta 
gets a free kick, top of the box. It took him a little bit to award uh, that foul. Uh, and he does my favorite move on a free kick. I I always credit this to Ronaldinho. I doubt he was the first to do it, but that's who always comes to mind here. He skips the ball under the wall. Just absolutely love it. The subversion here, it's just awesome. It, it just... And the announcing team lost their mind at this concept <laughs> of go under the wall. What was the, was it the World Cup game? Who did this for the U.S.? Where they almost beat Belgium, I want to say, where they had a free kick and they just rolled it under the wall as an almost pass to someone and he almost scored. I want to say it was who was the kid that we were like hyping like crazy? Not Freddie Adu. Julian Green. Julian Green. Wasn't he? Didn't he almost. He, he scored the goal in that game. I don't know if he was a part of that play. I think it was too Dempsey. Mm. It was kind of what the Netherlands did against um, Argentina, though, yeah. in the last World Cup, where it's like everyone's waiting for the free kick, and you just kind of tap it forward. I don't know if that one went under the wall. I thought it went under the wall. That like It went under, mm-hmm. everyone jumped, and like I thought it was, I guess it might have been Dempsey came in right behind it to go hit it, and it didn't. Mm. So, I don't remember this play. Oh, man. I got to find it now. I, might, I also might just be making this up. This might <laughs> just be something that, like a I fever just, I, I don't think... They might have jumped, but I don't think they went under. I think everyone just thought he was going to was going to be a shot on goal, and instead they tap it through kind of the side of the wall and then mm. onto like, and it all worked except for the shot. Classic. <laughs> but see, the next time you see someone laying down on the field, it's to stop that. That's exactly it. Yeah, and I just it always looks stupid in the moment until you finally see one of these goals, and you're like, all right. <laughs> I get why you lay somebody down, especially. This is also this is also a shot too where it looks incredibly stupid if they don't jump and it just goes directly into their feet. Yeah, you're like, true. why did we waste this opportunity? <laughs> or if it goes just a little too high, yeah, and clips someone's foot or something. Yeah, that's that's always a bummer. Um, but yeah, I think Ronaldinho has like two or three, three or four highlights of uh, of this exact move over the years, and it just always gives me. Always gives me joy. Uh, my internet is not behaving, so hopefully, Chief, you're able to to see that clip. Yeah, it wasn't. The, it wasn't quite the. <sighs> it was straight ahead at the wall, but it was definitely like the threaded it through a spot where the keeper had it covered. If it would have been a direct shot, but because it was a pass, it was it was very cool still. But I was misremembering. We should try that. We should. The, try the vibes are still there though. With the yeah. let's go. <laughs> yeah. Let's not try and get over the wall with this. Let's do something a little different. Which. I'm always in favor of. There's a good clip of uh, Stefan Fry. It was against the Sounders. I don't know who did the free kick. Somebody was laying down behind the wall, and he's like, no, this is stupid. He makes the guy get up, and he moves. Then they take the free kick, and the guy goes right under the wall and scores. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, that was like that was one of the, the better versions of that. But, yeah, I mean, it's been a while since I've seen one of those usually, but uh, – I'm glad because I didn't think Lucho was going to get it up and down. I haven't loved a lot of his free kicks, yeah. so I think he made the right. Oh, I think he made the right choice. <laughs> he clearly made the right choice. Yeah, and uh, it was beautiful. Now, do I think it was? I keep seeing like Lucho's Galazzo. I was like, I feel like there's got to be more. The ball's got to be doing a little more yeah. <laughs> magic for a Galazzo, but uh, unless it, yeah, but it's trickery. I'll take it. Like it's good trickery, but it's no, yeah. it's no. Um... Uh, Kellen Acosta Chicago Fire game. I don't know. If oh you my guys God! Saw that. <laughs> Sorcery. The the wind the windy city. Yeah. Indeed. <laughs> so this was this was two minutes where I was thinking, let's just style on him right here. Uh, I had visions of Hagland coming into this match. <laughs> let's just see this one out. Then uh, Sergio Santos <sighs> throws his name into the hat here and yeah decides to have one of the all time assists going the other way. I don't blame Miazga for any of that. I don't blame Roman for any of that. That was just Santos saying, let's just make this a little interesting. No, and Roman played so good this game. He deserved the clean sheet. Gets the MLS clean sheet. But really, it's just so frustrating that, yeah, the, the whole defense is, is left out to dry on on that play. What really stings, too, is uh, Veroni, or whatever, the uh, the striker for New England, was like, being uh basically dubbed a, a a flop an absolute failure signing for New England 
going into this game that like he really needed to show something. And of course we gift him a goal. So like it would have been would have been nice just to have Caleb Porter's DP striker get piled on a little bit more in the local media, but he gets a goal and I don't know. It's... And then at that point it's like New England just turns it on. Yeah. And I felt like this team was kind of on the rails. This was also about the time when all of a sudden it, the fact that we were playing on an artificial playing surface started to matter a little bit. There was at least one moment where Lucho slips on the turf, yep. falls into someone, and somehow gets a card for that, which was <laughs> utterly absurd. Uh, New England had an incredible chance to score where there was a 1v1 versus Roman that existed solely because Miazga went to make a challenge, and instead of his foot sliding into the ball, his foot just caught in the turf and stopped. I mean, oh. he's lucky in that moment he didn't seriously injure his knee the way right. that happened. So it led to this comical moment where Miazga is clearly moving his foot to poke the ball away and make a, gr a good defensive stop. And instead his foot stops comically one inch short of the ball, allowing the run to continue. And Roman just made himself big and the ball goes over his foot and the, or the, the goal. And then, what, two minutes later, Luca Oriano goes to clear a ball and loses his footing on the artificial surface, whiffs completely, and it leads to another missile directly at Roman. Uh, they said this was a new playing surface. They might want to check the sail slip on this one, because I did not think the turf was very good. <laughs> the game looked slow. The ball looked slow. It almost looked like the way Notre Dame used to grow their grass out whenever SC would come to town back about 20 years ago on the idea that maybe we can slow these guys down if they're playing in a prairie as opposed to a well-maintained playing surface. Soccer, turf, no. Ugh. I will say, at least for the visuals of this game, this was the nicest, aesthetically pleasing turf that I've seen ever. Uh, apparently it's brand new, so I guess this is the point where it looks the most like grass until it slowly gets beaten into looking more and more like carpet like, over time. Like but... bleached by the sun to looking like that awful fake plastic Ugh. shade of green versus yeah. the nice shade of green it is now. Yeah, I, I did end up watching at least the, the second half with my daughter, and the first thing she said, she is six years old, is that fake grass? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're good at this, all right. <laughs> <laughs> now here's your here's your first social media account. Get on there and bitch like the rest of us. Yeah. Why not them? They love it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they do hang on, and I gotta say, I, I don't know. Is there anything else from this game? I, I want to go big big picture with this, but Jonah, any other wanna... thoughts? Chief has something. Chief can we, can we just get, can we dap up uh, young Steven Jimenez gets into this game? <laughs> Human victory <and> prompt, cigar. <laughs> yeah, and promptly gives away one of the worst free kicks of the afternoon that should have been a goal. <laughs> he fouls a dude yeah. two times in the span of 30 seconds, gives up a free kick at the top of the 18. Your heart's got to be racing like a 1,000 miles an hour getting into an MLS game at 16. I don't care that it's not his first professional game. You're not even old enough to buy smokes, and you're in there playing against Carlos Heel. Come on. <laughs> and he has no desire to look more mature. Like, he has, like, the baggiest shorts, the baggiest jersey, the most, we'll say, youthful haircut. <laughs> it's like he looks like all of, like, I'm in high school, and I am in this game. If you're, if you're a 16-year-old in MLS, like it, yeah. you've got to, like, start looking like a, an 80s teen movie villain. You've got to shave the head. You've got to get, like, some bad facial hair. <laughs> <laughs> you've got to just ask Roman for some beard growing tips and just do what he's doing. <laughs> That's got to be your look. Well, Dotto got rid like, he's like, I'm going to real part of this team now. I'm getting a little higher fade here. I'm getting rid of the mop top. Yep. Steven, come time on, man. Up. It's it's time, bro. <laughs> he is out there with a Minecraft hoodie and Mr. Beast barrel <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> he almost looks like a video game character. I, Wouldn't you say, I, I don't think I'd <laughs> go that far, apparently. <laughs> I've been to Mercy Health. They've got a barber there. Come on. <laughs> like, someone's given my man terrible advice on how to dress and look like a professional. It's, uh, it's still Frankie. It's they still fly Frankie. him in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Carl flies him in out like we can't deny his fades, man. We gotta... his, uh, he, he snuck it into his contract. He's there for 10 years. He's the exclusive hair or barber of, uh, of Mercy Health. Um, but yeah, no, good, good win for the boys. No, uh, I think it was after the game. Um, 
on the Jimenez point, uh, Noonan said uh, he looked at his bench and uh, which is kind of like he's the one that makes sense. And they just like age doesn't really matter here. This is who we need, which I appreciate. But there has to be a moment of hesitation with like, <laughs> I mean, there has to be a moment of hesitation. Anytime you make any statement that approaches age isn't anything but a number. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. That's a good point. But I guess you're looking at uh, Powell and Haglin, some some seasoned pros out there. Halsey's no, uh, no, no veteran uh, by any means, and yeah, Jimenez gets the uh, gets the call. Um, he was out there. I, know, I do, I do want to talk about the big picture here because I, I do think, I think this is so funny that like so many people have been, and, and uh, us included. Let's let's be clear here. Whining about the goals, the strikers not not looking good. Lucho's body language is is being analyzed. The social <laughs> media is being analyzed. Uh, of course, the the off field stuff with Laurel and the the team going to war there. All of this stuff, and it feels like in some ways club in crisis that this season isn't off to the way that we want it to. And yet, this team sits two points out of first place. In the Eastern Conference, <clears throat> third in the East, fourth in the overall Supporters Shield, a game in hand on Miami, by the way, and sure, a respectable loss in the uh, Concacaf Champions League. Like, in theory, barring injuries, this is as bad as this FCC team will be all year. Like. How high is the ceiling on this team right now? How excited are we? Are we still apprehensive, or is this how we feel it? I um, yeah, that's the thing I had written down was that I personally don't care about the supporter shield this year. Right. We got it. I feel like it's not something you need to keep winning, <laughs> especially once you make it seems like every year whoever makes it the CONCACAF Champions League the year before. It cost them some games, although apparently we're basically at the same point we were at last year. But I think there might be a couple better teams like Miami, and if Columbus is good the whole year and not just hot at the end of the year. But I feel like it's all setting up for us to be one of the top two teams at the end of the year and maybe firing, truly firing at all cylinders when Chief probably would prefer us to when the MLS playoffs start. <laughs> Because last year we were kind of sputtering by the end, but we thought we could get through and almost did just based on having so many good players but not playing great as a team. So the fact that we're seemingly going to cruise pretty effectively towards the top of the standings playing, I don't know, kind of mediocre, just makes me feel good that I know, I just know in my heart, like the burst of goodness is coming and there's a million games for that to all really click. And then hopefully by the end of the season, which is a long way away, we'll be truly firing on all cylinders and then can redeem ourselves from last year. That's the goal. And yeah, so I, you gotta be feeling pretty good. All yeah. things considered. You absolutely gotta be feeling good. Look, we, we <laughs> all off season, what was the what was the topic of conversation around this team? It was, um, well, I mean, it was Ariel hates this club and wants to leave. That was topic <laughs> number one. Um, no, it was that you cannot get fixated on the weekly up and down with this team. Like I know last week felt like an eternity, and we'll you know I guess we'll talk a little bit about that in the next segment. But a week ago, Monday. DeAndre Yedlin came into this team or two <laughs> weeks ago Monday. Like DeAndre Yedlin has only been around since like I think March 4th. Yeah. So two weeks ago, DeAndre Yedlin showed up. This is still, for all intents and purposes, the first couple of games most of these guys are playing with one another. Luca Oriano looked incredible today. He looked yeah. incredibly threatening in this game. He had a should have been goal. If it weren't for Santos being a dipshit, <laughs> he almost he had a one v uh, he made a bad choice. But if he would he had, was put himself into a situation where he should have had an assist, just making a layoff to Pavel Buka, who also looked really good in this game. Um, yeah, it's it's everything is setting up in front of this team. And oh, by the way, they just went 
and beat New England in New England. They won a road game in MLS without Obina Wobodo in this game. He was unavailable for this game, unavailable for the, the Monterey game, and this team acquitted itself really well without him playing a minute for either of these two games. So yeah, I'm with Jonah. I don't the odds are they're not going to win supporter shield twice in a row. It doesn't happen that often in MLS. So get right, get your points. I I think that there's at least something to watch with this idea of the offense not producing or the strikers not producing goals when you know Corey Baird wasn't really a striker in this game, but Corey Baird didn't do a lot for me in this game at all that made me think, oh, goals are coming for Corey. Right. Santos, I think I would just cut. I would use the buyout on him right now, or I would see if there's literally anyone that will take him elsewhere in MLS for a dollar just to get his salary off the books. And Bupenza, he subbed in. There wasn't a lot for him to do in the second half, and his, you know, lack of output, you know, the more games he goes not scoring, the louder it's going to get that you're paying him a lot of money to score goals. But they're winning. They're coming together. They're learning to play together. The sky is not falling on this team. This is a this is a good team that's going to get better as the year goes on. Yeah, completely agree. Like this is this is exciting. This is this is the fun part where, sure, the like I said, the Concacaf Champions League sucks to be out, but it was always a long shot, and now we can focus on seeing this team come together cohesively and. I think it'll be interesting if this team does progress the way that we think it will. I the, I think the the interesting thing to keep an eye on will be the debate of um, do we care about League's Cup? And do we try for League's Cup and that's the trophy we try for? Or do we throw in the towel, take what amounts to two months off, and then build towards MLS Cup? So That's future us problem. <laughs> We'll see how this first half of the season goes. Uh, but that's going to do it for these match recaps. Uh, we'll head on over to part two, uh, where we got some FCC news roundup, and uh, we'll, we'll get you on out of here. And before we get into the next part of the episode, I want to tell you about our other sponsor, Cincy Shirts. And if you're going to sit here and tell me that you've never heard of Cincy Shirts, I'm going to sit here and tell you, I don't believe you. Because these guys have been with FC Cincinnati from the very beginning. And we here at The Post, well, we are just huge, huge fans of their work. They have tons of really cool FC Cincinnati gear, shirts, hoodies, hats, all sorts of cool stuff. Go over to their website, check out what they are selling. You want to go to cincyshirts.com. That is Cincy with a Y, or you can just click the link in the description of this episode. And when you go there, use the promo code the post Cincy, all one word, all caps, and they will knock 10% off your next order. They have MLS and MLSPA licensed FCC gear available online or in their three retail locations in Hyde Park, Fort Mitchell, or Loveland. And I can attest to this. I've used this before. If they don't have your size on the shelf, they can probably print you one on the spot in the store. So again, huge thank you to Cincy Shirts for sponsoring the postcast and a huge thank you to you, dear listener, for using that promo code. Right, we are back. A little FCC news roundup, and look, we said our piece on this story before, so let's let's get this one out of the way. The war of words between, uh, I mean, I, I I don't know if that's even an appropriate way to, to categorize this, but FC Cincinnati and Laurel Failure of Queen City Press, which to be clear is Laurel's own outlet with, <laughs> with her and her husband helps on the podcast. Um, a juggernaut. It's, it's, I mean, they do, they do all right for themselves. Yeah. <laughs> <But>, Scripts broadcasting. <laughs> uh, look, I'm surprised nobody has bought them out because I am just begging for somebody to buy us out. That would be lovely. Um, we will sell out immediately to literally any other come on now. podcast. <laughs> but 
FC Cincinnati, uh, hours before the the Monterey game, I almost said Montreal to really think about it. Uh, <laughs> hours before the Monterey game, uh, sends out a a statement. I don't have it in front of me. I, I don't want to dive too too far into this. Essentially, trying to do their best to outline FC Cincinnati's position, uh, explaining why they suspended Laurel for two weeks, uh, her credential access, but um. Failed to mention an exact specific reason, just sort of cited vague guidelines um, as to reasons why this this would have happened, um, and and did sort of include some language that basically said because Laurel spoke about it, we feel like we have to, which was a little weird. Um, and then Laurel responded, uh, essentially saying, you know, defending herself once again with that one. Um, at this point, Chief, I, I think. We're we're in agreement here that like this is between Laurel and the club and support independent journalism and I'll even go as far as to say fan outlets in MLS. Huh? Can we can we group group ourselves in there? No. Uh, we no. Cannot. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> we are we are nonsense. Support independent voices. Does that get us in there by proxy? Um, Pull out. <laughs> the, uh, the yeah. This is between them and and. Support Laurel and and hope for the best, but uh, not a great look from the club overall. A PR battle they they probably were never going to win without uh, busting out dates and times and names. I guess I don't know. You really had to have something here, and uh, yeah, I don't I don't know what else to say other than like this is a real bummer for I think the FC Cincinnati community. Yeah, I mean, there's a the timeline is of this is all really in that Laurel releases the information that she's been suspended. Then the club goes radio silent on the matter. When, if you would have released your statement immediately afterwards, it would have been okay. Everyone has their piece. And I'm just looking at this from a public relations point of view. Mm -hmm. I'm not judging anyone's arguments on the merit at this point. Um, that you would have had the, the news cycle and it would have moved on. But instead, by waiting until you know later in the week, to issue your statement, then everybody had kind of started to move on a bit, but then you release your statement and that starts the story back up again. And, you know, I'll bet that the reason why they released the statement was that I think later on that same day or the next day, there's an article that comes from Jason Williams and the Inquirer that, you know, <laughs> he said his piece on the matter and the way that Jason Williams does, love him or hate him. And uh, so I assume they were getting something out ahead of that or that they'd been called for comment and decided to release whatever their comment was publicly. And then it just it started it all over again. And yeah. then all of a sudden it felt like on the day of the Monterey game, you know, thinking back to that, it was the game felt like a side attraction to the show of FCC versus the media. And then over the weekend, I think yesterday or today, ESPN writes a piece on it. Jeffrey Carlisle, yep. I think it was Carlisle wrote it. Yep. I think. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So Carlisle writes a piece, and in that one, we finally start to get a bit more clarity with people speaking to him on on background about the matter from the team, where it seems very clear that the the ire of whatever Laurel did centers around her reporting on the Barial story, which you know called a lot of the narrative and quite frankly, the reporting of Pat Brennan into question over what I think most people agree. I mean, even I think Laurel might agree with this was she was going with the agent side of the story, uh, who was representing the player, the player's side of the story. And we, we criticized it at the time, this idea that it seemed to be saying that, you know, oh, Barrial loved it here. He was happy here. Um, it was business that he wanted to move on. It's like, well, no, he wanted to move on. He wasn't happy here because he wanted to go make more money someplace else and do his business someplace else. Working out great for Barrial, by the way, as I think he was <laughs> is a substitute for his new club now. Made it on for like 20 minutes in the last game, 30 minutes in the last game. Yeah, barely plays anymore. Yeah. So, so it, yeah, he could be mm. he could be starting these games against Monterey and <laughs> in MLS and working towards a transfer elsewhere. But you know, he made his choice and his agent certainly went and tried to spin that as best as possible for him. This is just the problem is, is that I look, I support journalism. I support journalism rights. We said a lot about this last week. My 
nothing about what is said either side has changed anything about my opinion and that's that even if you take at face value what fc cincinnati is alleged she's done and even if you agree yeah that's kind of a shit look that you write uh on one article you write basically the psra's press release form and don't go to the club for statement or don't even say the club cannot comment on this because of mls's investigation and on the other one you're feeding Barrial's mouthpiece uh, a platform, even if that's true, it doesn't justify pulling credentials. Like, there were so many other ways they could have handled this. They could have slow walked her access. They could have ordered Pat Noonan to give her one word answers. They could have astroturfed their own competitor to her. They could have found someone who's doing content for FC Cincinnati and said, here, would you like to have some access <clears throat> and <clears throat> we're going to buy your website for you and we're going to get you a bunch of player interviews to start off? I mean, if that's us, are we going to say no? Even if we find out the goal is to try and undermine Laurel, we can be I bought mean, out for anything. Why would just we, continue? We to have, we have this. established. <laughs> we have established. We will sell out for quite literally anything. That like, might be the slogan of the post. <laughs> right. <laughs> if there's a steady paycheck involved, I'll believe whatever you tell me to believe. That was that was Winston from the Ghostbusters. That applies here too. Um, <laughs> It's just, it's a terrible look on everybody, and it's just, it's been a bummer, because it feels like the front office of FC Cincinnati has earned a ton of goodwill with how they've managed just about everything over the last two years yeah. since Noonan and Albright showed up, and this was in a position where they were doing shit that was kind of undefensible. Like, even if you want to stand the club on this one, there wasn't a lot to say other than, I don't like what Laurel writes, and that's kind of... As a fan, that's a shitty place to be in with your team. Yeah. Because I, I don't want to go online and shit on my favorite sports teams. Like, I have two sort of positions I like to take with my sports teams. I either want to be, like, completely in favor of everything they're doing and fuck the rest of the world, or I just will find something else to talk about for a couple of weeks till the bad thing goes away. <laughs> right. Like, like, the Buccaneers had MRSA in the locker room and almost killed their kicker. I wasn't there, you know, demanding and shitting on the team. I was just like, can you guys please just get your shit together so that I don't have to deal with this and read about this? Yeah. Uh, for Grayson's sake, I will say I've I've <clears throat> thoroughly enjoyed a lot of the online reactions being um, upset that Carlisle spoke to anonymous sources. Uh, just said. Yeah, Grayson. Grayson got skewered for questioning anonymous sources when the sourcing itself is very important. You know, if that source is Jeff Birding or even a Pat Brennan, that radically alters, you know, one person or the other, uh, who that anonymous source is, right? Or if it's Carl Linder, for that matter, like, that would be wild if that was the anonymous source here. So yeah, I just, I just thought that was funny. Yeah. Um, now on our, now anonymous sources are bad all of a sudden who knew oh imagine yeah. that when it's a source close to barial it's like well that's got to be the truth uh jonah is 15 minutes of silence yes. too short <laughs> for a protest <laughs> yeah that's you know i feel like laurel kind of got not her but she's like now like the smallest part of the story because it's just this group of people who are desperate to latch on to things to hate the team they supposedly love right. so much. Right. And they're so like, weird. oh, this is a chance to turn on them and bring them down. Um, not everyone. Like these could, there's a lot of people I saw a lot of people who, you know, just earnestly being upset with the club or like, why are you doing this? Why are you making me mad at you? I don't want to be mad at you. Which is also it also is it's all very soccer specific thing. Mm -hmm. I don't Bengals fans are going to be like, oh, you shouldn't have pulled that guy's credentials. It would not, they would not root for the Steelers that <laughs> Sunday. I promise you. Meanwhile, there are psychotic fans who are like hoping FCC loses that game just to prove a point. And I'm like, my bandwidth has gotten small enough where like I'm just like, I like the team <laughs> and I don't, I, as long as we're not in a Portland Timbers situation from a couple of years ago, yeah. I mean, that's why you need independent, you need people covering the team for this and that the stuff like Barrios transfer and stuff. I don't care too much. So that's why I find myself just getting mad about the people who are using this as the rallying cry. And yes, 15 minutes of silence. Like I said, 
I don't think we would do that if the Brent Spence Bridge collapsed the day before and like 50 <laughs> people fell to their death. I think we'd give them five maybe or like, you know, banner, like 15 yeah. minutes. Yeah. <laughs> and I was also like, they were talking about like feeling for the people like, oh, I can't get a hashtag free Palestine. And meanwhile, <laughs> Laurel's <laughs> trending on Twitter. Um, but yeah, I'll be, what do we got? Eight days left. Yeah. I'll be happy for her to come back. I'll be happy for this to be somewhat over. It's never over, but you know, to be kind of over. And she wouldn't have picked it this way. She didn't get her credentials pulled on purpose, but this is a hundred percent the best thing that could have ever happened to Laurel. <laughs> I, I'm sure her Patreon numbers, I'm sure everything. So many people, more people know who she is now. Oh yeah. And it's a, if you're going to like get known for something bad happening to you, this is the level of bad you want to happen. <laughs> right. Credential We're, pulling, you're fine, you're safe, everything's okay. I mean, people were saying she's been banished, right. which I mean, I guess in a way, but she will be back, so I'm assuming. And on it, yeah, it this is going to end up being a great thing. I'm sure it's her. I'm sure it's ridiculously stressful to deal with in the moment yes. when this is like what yes. your bread and butter is and how you eat. But by not the same, what you would have picked. No, absolutely. not what you would have picked. But that's the other thing too is that okay, look, free Laurel on Twitter fine you want to help her out do what a bunch of us do and go subscribe to her content tell yeah. other people to subscribe to her content vote with your wallet yeah don't um, buy a t-shirt from an obvious grift by the way i don't know what the exact arrangement there is but you can give go, 20 bucks to her on patreon directly yeah. i don't know what the hell that yeah, was go, about go, su go subscribe to her content retweet her shit like that's the way you support journalism you don't support journalism by engaging in slacktivism by you know doing a hashtag every time the club tweets or calling your ticket rep to bitch like that's not that's not no. productive in this space and it doesn't it if you want to show something you know go support her work click through retweet her stuff do all that that's the that's the real thing here although it would it would be really funny because i i noticed this too that stories like this do bring out of the woodwork a very certain type of FC Cincinnati fan. And those are the people that are, they exist in the national media a lot, but they exist enough in our local fan base that they make a lot of noise. And that is the virulent Jeff Birding haters. Yeah. Where these people hate Jeff Birding. And I'm not saying you have to love Jeff Birding as an FC Cincinnati fan. I think you have to have at least a nuanced view of him if you're going to show up and cheer uh, and be a season <laughs> ticket holder of this team considering it would not exist but for him. Uh, so if you're a virulent Jeff Birding hater, I think you're a little weird. I'm just going to... You're fucking strange, if that's your personality type, is that the name Jeff Birding makes you irrationally angry. And whenever things like this happens, it brings all those people out of the woodwork. Yeah. And there was a non-insignificant amount of support of Laurel that was born not so much out of caring about Laurel as to I just love to watch when this team screws up, which as a fan is profoundly weird. It would be funny, though, if Laurel's coverage now becomes like the heel commentator on a pro <laughs> wrestling broadcast where she's Jerry the King Lawler and she's just cheering for the club's failure and <laughs> gleefully pointing out when things are going wrong. I don't know if there's enough Patreon numbers to support that sort of counter programming, but it would be absolutely wild <laughs> if this was the origin story for the villain reporter. <laughs> It'd be tough so long as the team is good. I think the second that there is a true downturn, I think that's when you pounce. <laughs> but no, Jonah, to your point, this made me think of this. And if this is a inappropriate comparison, please uh, cut my mic off. Um, it does remind me of when uh, Pat Brennan was tackled by what took like 19 police officers during the Black Lives Matters <laughs> protests. It was like, Pat Brennan was on the FCC Xavier beat, and all of a sudden it was like, damn, the face of democracy right here. <laughs> <laughs> All-time great Pat. footage, though. <laughs> literally free Pat. Pat literally in jail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually in jail. Probably had to get the Inquirer's lawyers very involved. Um, <laughs> uh, I was thinking one day, like five years from now, I'm going to be walking down the street 
run into a guy who's wearing a free laurel shirt. I'm wearing a Chuck Wharton shirt, and we're just gonna be like, "Well, man, we've really <laughs> we've, we've had some, some journeys. <laughs> we've made some purchases." <laughs> Chuck Wharton, yeah. <laughs> oh, Chuck man. Wharton laurel. <laughs> I need I need comments on Twitter or in the Discord. If you know who Chuck Wharton is, that's such a good pull. It's, it's a real Reddit uh, era reference. We need to. Uh, we we already already agreed that we would serve Laurel suspension for her. Yes. We would agree to not have credentials for twenty weeks mm-hmm. to get her two week ban reduced. Um. I think it's not time to start making demands. I think that if you're going to reinstate Laurel, you've got to reinstate Opie too. That it's got to be a clean slate. It's got to be a total mm. amnesty, forgiveness. Um, we're having that period where you can just return your library books and there's no fines anymore. That if Laurel comes back, we need Opie to be allowed back in the stadium. I mean, Opie's been... He's actually been it's, banned. It's been months. It's been years. Um, it's basically been... on. Alcatraz of band just like forgotten on an island. But Jonah, would, that's would, okay. Will you make a request for Opie to get a credential tomorrow morning? <laughs> <laughs> you see, Jeopardy, oh, Jeopardy Opie has a chance to do the funniest thing ever. O- Opie walks in with the media credential hanging around his neck. <laughs> Laurel is still suspended, but no Opie point. is <laughs> yeah, just sits Jeff's there the like, entire time hat. silently. This is press <laughs> fedora. <laughs> Or he walks in with one of those free Laurel shirts, but it's in the Opie costume. <laughs> <laughs> Produces Jeff's no like, content. No, this would be great. Yeah. <laughs> no, the the fans will love this. They love this kind of stuff. This will get everybody back. <laughs> the camera <laughs> will pan- I realize everybody hates me. <laughs> the camera will pan up to the press box, and it's just Opie sitting there, <laughs> like hands sitting on the table, not writing anything, not doing anything. <laughs> I'll tell you this much: a funnier club would jump on this. Oh my God! Yeah, <laughs> funny your club. I have a <laughs> go. Yeah, you know, well, I have a question for everyone. This was uh, this question is based on a statement by a longtime listener of uh, the Cincy Postcast. I assume privately, mm. he called the day of the FCC press release the worst day in FC Cincinnati history. <laughs> my question: What do you think was the worst day in FC Cincinnati history? <laughs> do you think it was the day they put out that statement? Or possibly a day they fired Ron Yans. I don't want to put I think answers the day in that your he head. Did the karaoke was the worst day. Was the worst day of the day they fired him. <laughs> the karaoke the day they he fired him. Was that was probably good. the best day. Yeah. <laughs> the karaoke is the karaoke. Yeah, he loved this it. This is the same club. I mean, granted. I mean, what about what about when they evicted that ninety nine year old woman out of her apartment? I was Mary Page say, carried her out. <laughs> I think. Can you point to one day though for that, or was that you know? The day they bought the building, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the way they hammered the eviction notice comically onto her door, and she was laying in bed wondering, "What's that sound?" The worst day in FCC history. Uh, <laughs> the the getting a uh, uh, Yapstam's photo wrong, uh, because not only was it a massive blunder that made it all yeah. over the world, but then that's probably true. Hiring Ron <laughs> or hiring Yapstam was also yeah, was a all massive disaster. <laughs> I I will also say this, you know, sports Twitter sports writers. They're just so obnoxious. They're just so obnoxious. <laughs> I want to be on their side, and then like the Ben babies of the world, and then like these like where the fuck did this guy come from? And then like you know they don't even know what's going on. They're like, is this a chance for sports writers to <laughs> puff their chests out? Like I'm fucking in. It's just what is so the much worst standing eye rolling history. I know it's an interesting thought. All I'm saying is it's not losing, bad. losing, <laughs> l- dropping a two goal lead in the Eastern Conference Finals to Columbus. That was a pretty bad day. It's rough, but that's like that's a good problem to have. In no, it's way. in no no way is it a good problem. To <laughs> I'd have. rather be that. Okay, so clenching, no, I wouldn't. Clen- I would have rather lost the week before. I was gonna say clenching the third consecutive last place finish is probably a, uh, which I think this actually officially gets me a punishment. But this, I think that you is didn't say the s word. The, you true, didn't say the s word. True. Uh, I um, think that is the official worst day is clenching three last place finishes. I don't know. Yeah. Signing Fernando Audi. <laughs> we were so happy. I don't know. We they weren't technically an MLS club when that happened. Mm, we were, though. Legally, the MLS club traded for him and loaned him to the USL club. So Ah, there we go. Um, there have been a lot, of bad, think it, a lot of bad days to choose from. 
Yeah. I do think it was Ron Jans just because that press conference was so bad. And it looked like Gerard was like, Ugh. still like contemplating, like, why do we have to fire him? <laughs> like, this isn't not, a big deal. Not to make this about Laurel's actual journalism, but God, how do you not ask him, do you really think Ron Jans deserved to be fired? Because yeah. like in that press conference, that was the only takeaway that we, uh, like, at least for me, and I think Kevin, I think you and I were texting or yeah, talking on that like day. He does that not want to fire him. He he does not believe Ron Yon's need to be fired. I don't think he condemned at all what Ron had done. I think he described it as a cultural misunderstanding or something like that. Or at the very least, I think because it was him and Jeff, I think Birding did all of that. Like explained how like the col- the club doesn't, you know, tolerate that sort of behavior. We're not that culture, blah, blah, blah. And then they let Nykamp go to like the nuts and bolts of the firing and hiring a new manager. And I think that was the same press conference that, uh, is it Jeff Hobson like popped in to be like a real reporter's got to show him what to do. And just like also didn't ask that question. So yeah. Yeah. Weird. I was just, just was when, it? um, just in that recap she did with, uh, Nykamp a couple weeks ago, oh, where he yeah. was at, like, yeah, ask him in hindsight, in hindsight, mm. do you agree that Ron Jans had to be fired? That would have been, a potentially very interesting and revealing question. God, his answer could have been like, look how Ron's doing in the Netherlands now. He oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if all these crybabies was... would have just gotten over it. Yeah. Jeff, that was, I don't think Jeff's ever looked rougher. <laughs> he looked that like was bad. <laughs> he was going through it right then. He was sweaty, hair all tussled. That was fun. Uh, is the worst day in FCC history the day that they said that they had a major European uh, friendly scheduled and then oh that that could, press conference couldn't is name the opponent because they were probably running down their list no, real fast. Have you you know the story on that right was that apparently that there was they had to get the all clear from somebody from uh, Valencia to say yes, and that person was supposed to be in the U.S. and his flight got delayed, <laughs> and apparently he didn't pay for the Wi-Fi on his flight, so they couldn't get a hold of him <laughs> while he was. While he was over the Atlantic, and I so they they that. they they couldn't get a hold of the one person who needed to be like, okay, you can just do this press conference without me. So yeah, if you go on FC Cincinnati's YouTube, I'm pretty sure that entire video is still there, where Birding has to come out and say, um, we have a major announcement to make, uh, and we will not be able to announce the team we are playing, but we will be able to announce that it <laughs> is from La Liga. <laughs> And meanwhile, the entire internet already somehow knew that Valencia was the team, but he went and proceeded to dance around in front of the media for 20 minutes, just not being able to name the team they were bringing in. It's so good. <laughs> it's such good footage. It's it, You have to scroll really far back in the team's YouTube page, but it's still there. Uh, or it was as recently as like six months ago. He used to have a lot more press conferences, didn't he? My, that, was, that was something he was known for. Yeah, the my, podium. My favorite press conference, though, was the one where him and Carl jumped on a Facebook Live for three minutes to say that, okay, fine, we'll privately fund the stadium. <laughs> and just ended it. <laughs> <laughs> Ungrateful bastards. <laughs> that was a good... Give money to libraries, but not to us. <laughs> Uh well speaking well, tweet at us what do you think is the worst day in FC's history <laughs> this is content Kevin yeah leave a comment tweet, hashtag worst day yeah. <laughs> worst day hashtag free op hashtag free Laurel. hashtag post facts post facts Pavel we are post facts here uh no I was gonna say speaking of wasting uh, a lot of money Marco Angulo maybe headed back to Ecuador that's mean that's mean to Marco <laughs> he, Angulo he was he was a waste of a lot of money. Uh, it does appear that he is headed on loan. At least, uh, the rumors out of South America are he is headed to uh LDU Quito, which I gotta say is my adopted Ecuadorian team. We're excited. I couldn't tell you where where the team stands on the table, but I have a scarf of theirs, so that's as far as it gets with me. I hope that's, high on the table <laughs> at least. Jesus. Um. So yeah, I mean, they're one of the better teams, and Ecuador is a generally a uh, good place to go. But um, yeah, this is one a sad, disappointing, probably end of our time with Marco Angulo. But looking at it through utilitarian eyes, this does in fact open up that U twenty two spot, at least for the time being, for the mystical, rumored, alleged, hypothetical U twenty two striker. Uh, should this all come to pass, 
I think we said this even on this this podcast to keep an eye out on Marco Angulo's status here. Uh, Jonah, U22 mm. striker, does that do anything for you? I thought you were going to say favorite Marco Angulo <laughs> moment. Favorite Marco I Angulo. Like, All right. <laughs> I couldn't name you one, honestly. It's like when I did the top five Fernando Adi goals <laughs> video, and I stopped at four. Like, all right, top four. Let's <laughs> give up. Uh, sh- yes, obviously, after uh, Chiefs impassioned defense of Sergio Santos, <laughs> you'd have to. Uh, yeah, I I was willing to see a Archimedes come back, so <laughs> I'm ready for anything. Yeah, I mean the. The best thing that we as fans do of this team is get excited about players we haven't seen yet. So whoever this mystery player is will be an absolute breath of fresh air. And, you know, just somebody get in there and offer something uh, a little different than what we've seen so far. Or maybe put a little fire under some of the other guys who aren't quite performing. But um, is it will take away the pain of losing Marco? I'm not quite sure yet, mm. you know. Remember at bidding it last year, we were all like, I guess Moreno's done. <laughs> like, this is his replacement. We got it. They're like, no, Moreno will probably start the year. They're like, yeah, that's right. Ease him in. And then we're like, no, no, no. All right. No, no not, not going to happen. His way and then we, we'd have a game where like, Marco Angulo actually looked really good. And then we'd be like, did he? And then <laughs> that was it. Great head of hair. True. Absolutely. Elite level haircut. Um, yeah, that's what you got. This is what you got to do with U22 spots, though, is that they are lottery tickets and you got to be comfortable churning and burning. You got to, you know, get back up on the horse and find they're lucky they found someone who would take them. That's pretty cool, because based on the footage he put out last year, I wouldn't. <laughs> um, yeah. He's young. He sounds like he was. It's just. If this is the last of Marco Angulo, um, he was just it was a shit situation for him from start. He. I don't know if people remember this. He was involved in a pretty horrendous mm. car accident where his cousin, I want to say, was killed. Yeah. That was literally weeks before he moved to the U.S. And apparently there's some chatter out there that he, his parents or his family couldn't join him in the U.S., that they weren't able to get approved to, to come in here with him. So he was, what, 20 years old, 21 years old? Um, by himself in a country just coming off a traumatic experience and on a team that was supporters shield winning and there just wasn't a lot of minutes for reserves last year. Noonan rode the regulars pretty hard. Yeah. So he's young. He'll probably have an opportunity to do better. I would assume any purchase option that uh, is triggered automatically at the end of his loan will include some sort of a sell on. So you want to, root for for marco wherever he's at and yeah what jonah said uh new players could always be the next great player i know that angulo probably wasn't this new player could be a superstar (laughs) who knows (laughs) i demand that they are a superstar um my favorite marco angulo memory i do have one it was at the airport celebrating the clenching of the supporter shield with the uh, the players uh in that moment the players were unbelievably happy excited we've all seen the videos of Haglin in particular jumping off the uh the bus there uh literally into the arms of supporters everybody's singing songs may have been beverages consumed then and uh, i was hanging out towards the back of the group sort of filming taking it all in and i noticed off to the the side there just one one guy sneaking away Marco Angulo just sort of quietly walking away from the party, everything else going on. He just was headed off, and it always struck me as a little weird moment. Like, he didn't have another friend with the team to hang out with, or just didn't want to enjoy the win or something. Just never felt like he fully got into the team, and that's that's a little bit of a bummer, especially like you said, young guy couldn't get family there. I'm I'm sure it just wasn't a good fit overall. So bummer good oppor- good opportunity though you know what he yeah. gets a fresh start closer to home and uh u22 striker i liked the idea somebody else had earlier in the discord today that since the mls is going to be changing the rules rumored to open up the three u22 initiatives i think you should be able to add those together just as long as the combined age of the three players you bring in is under 66 <laughs> that if you want to have you know <laughs> If you want to bring in Olivier Giroud, who I think is like 38 and apparently going to be available this summer, 
then just the next player has to be under 24. Yeah. And you get two instead of one. You get two instead of three. He's using a lot of that that, that year budget there. <laughs> yeah, but have you seen the way he the way he gets Ariel and scores goals from the uh the hold up play position? <laughs> Giroux for Santos? Uh, I don't know if I uh. make that deal. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> sir oh god uh well that's all i got for fcc news uh is there anything else that uh it tickled y'all's fancy here um i gotta give a shout out Ooh. to uh one of our sponsors cincy shirts oh yeah uh, please yeah I had my mother-in-law's 70th birthday was this weekend and my father-in-law to say he delayed in the planning process a little bit for such a momentous occasion and <laughs> it was sort of an all hands on deck to try and do things right for this occasion and gets the bright idea about a week before the uh the event hey we should do shirts up you know for everyone that's coming to the party <laughs> and so uh reached out to your good friend my good friend josh Schnee at cincy shirts on the uh on the dms and said hey i know you guys are this is would be small potatoes for you but can you recommend anyone locally that would do a custom i've got the artwork i already designed the artwork already i just need someone that'll run off about two dozen of these um birthday party shirts for my mother-in-law can you recommend me anyone locally because custom ink would cost me a fortune to do this as a rust job he said oh yeah no we'll take care of that and by damn it everyone got their custom shirt for my in-laws my mother-in-law's 70th birthday party and i earned so many valuable (laughs) in-law points as a result of this so if you're not a believer in cincy shirts Promo code uh, the post Cincy at checkout for ten percent off. I even picked myself up. They've got a brand new. Uh, they've got the cream colored Gary shirts out. Yep, wearing one right hey, now. Hey, there They're it swag. is. Swag, pretty swag looking. It's got the uh, that crazy weird print with kind of plaid tartan thing that they have. Everyone, on the look. Mm. If you're it's listening, good. look. Yeah, you <laughs> can't see it, but phone. if you could see it, it would look awesome. <laughs> but it's at the stores right now. <laughs> 10% off. They uh so thank you. You uh you saved my marriage in some way. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was looking dicey right up until this t-shirt shirt. Marriages aren't won and lost in one day. So no, yes. No, it's, it's a it's a series of accumulated points and you, you yeah. never know when these points are going to be valuable. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I guess the only other thing I had is, uh, had a wonderful conversation with my brother this past week where he come to realize he has, uh, played in a band and is very good friends with Adam of Jim Trace and the Makers. And he had no idea that they did the music for, for the podcast and that we, we had a good relationship with them. Hilarious. So, uh, yeah, it turns out my brother played in the Grove for a year with Adam, so there you go this small city, cincinnati huh? world jonah what's your fun fact for the feet for the people this week yeah oh fun fact well i shouldn't say well maybe i you know i was thinking i'm like the anti grayson because mm. he's methodical plotting yep. when he's speaking he doesn't just say things to say them meanwhile i'm used to you know hosting klr with my brother so i'm like i'm so afraid of dead air you know it's a podcast <laughs> that you could edit <laughs> Just immediately start speaking and hope that, like, I catch up. Was that what Michael Scott yes. said? I just start and hope I kind of figure out <laughs> yes. where I'm going to go afterwards. <laughs> uh, but I will say, you know, since you baby talk, soccer's starting this week, folks. Oh, baby. Spring soccer for the kiddos. I'm back kicking and screaming on the sideline. Child rearing. Nice. Molding minds. Scoring goals. So I'll have a lot to bitch about <laughs> with these kids. Is your uh, they tried to break? Go oh, ahead, I was to say, is your brother or or Nick joining? No, he's assisting. Okay, good. No. good. <laughs> yeah. Nick lives in like Fairfax. Oh, he might as well be geez. in like Indianapolis. It's, I know I went the wrong way, <laughs> but same See, idea. <laughs> yeah. You know, if if we, you know, another great idea that we'll never follow up on with the post Cincy Productions here at all. Um, if we ever wanted to branch out to do more content in terms of podcast content i would listen to a soccer dad's podcast just bitching about being involved (laughs) with their kids leagues and all the stupid shits going on as a person with no children i would find that to be tremendously entertaining content with the right people talking i did yell just briefly i don't i don't yell at refs really i know there's a lack of refs we're talking little kid refs (laughs) 
My son's last indoor game was today, and a player is on a breakaway for his team and gets absolutely like clobbered, just taken down. No regard for the ball at all. They have to check on him, make sure he's okay. This takes like a minute long. He's like, gets off. He blew. The, he called the foul. He picks up the ball, throws it to the opposing team's goalie. Says, "All right, play." Huh? I was like, "What?" <laughs> what? <laughs> I screamed out, "Like free kick!" <laughs> yeah. And they you just, should pay me for this. <laughs> <laughs> they just played the game. And I like, we're like, you know, it's like not a big deal, obviously. It's like a little kid's game. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> also, shout out to my son, the team, which is pretty good for like seven year olds. They usually can't do this. They kept like doing an indoor, you can do a back pass to the keeper. They could pick it up. Every time my son turns around, he just raises both his arms and he's like, what? <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> and after the game, he's like, they kept doing it. I'm like, you can do that. He's like, well, you shouldn't be allowed to. That's like, yeah, true. I was like, yes. but you can. <laughs> yes, I approve. But thanks of for showing disgust. Maybe the ref would have called it. I don't know. We got a fucking foul, and they just gave it to their goalie. I'm like, all right, start it up, buddy. At what age does do the kids start to understand that you can do the VAR symbol <laughs> in the match, even though there is clearly no VAR in rec league soccer, youth soccer? First practice is Tuesday, so I'll, I'll, I'll that could be the first thing I talk about. As soon, if you I'll, if if you get a call you disagree with. You're not supposed to, don't talk to the official. Just make this sign in his face. <laughs> He'll understand what it means. It's usually like a 12 year old. So I've actually been able to be like, that actually wasn't a goal. And they just like took it off. They're like, okay, sorry. <laughs> like those, they just like, like, oh, okay. This is like a 40 year old guy telling me what to do. I'm just going to listen to them. I'm like, hey, man, that was a handball. It's like, oh, my bad. <laughs> Close <the> whistle. <laughs> no need for VAR. The coaches are the VAR. I am the hey, VAR. Hey, man, you might. <laughs> it's a good t shirt. Um, Oh man! Yeah, something to look forward to. Uh, well, hey, good luck to you. Good luck to the to the coaching staff and, uh, of course, the players Absolutely. over there. At do we have a team name yet, or is that determined in the first practice? Oh, this is this is Clifton. Oh, okay, this is Clifton okay. We're State still soccer, Clifton. so yeah, nice. Screw Northside. I almost said the F word. But no, it's a, it's a I mean, you can swear. Ish. The, the Darby. <laughs> yeah. you, they could be the twelfth listener. You never know. So you don't want to start a. It'd be a depression on our on our downloads in Northside. <laughs> <laughs> How dare he? Oh, it's already well. dropping with me here. Yeah. <laughs> well, awesome. Well, hey, that uh, I don't know. Keep us posted. All right, you'll be back, and I want to. I want. I want some live updates. All right. <laughs> yeah, Grayson will be in what Vale next week, and then yeah, uh, he did message the uh, Saint Petersburg. He did like message that. the postcast to say Donald Trump Jr. is at this restaurant. So if that gives you the sense of <laughs> of the circles, uh, that... probably not B Dubs, right? <laughs> <laughs> Unless he's on the campaign trail for his dad. He's yeah, he's probably at a. Nice restaurant. Right. <laughs> Even that. He's outside the B-dubs, all right? He's the appearance yeah. of B-dubs. <laughs> we said we would sell out to anyone. B-dubs? <laughs> oh. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Message Grayson back. It's like, are you interested in a podcast sponsorship? I can talk about how good Trump stakes are if the money's right. <laughs> I just sent him you the know. classic, get him on the pod. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, those... he loves the sport. Absolutely loves it. <laughs> uh, Baron plays was in the DC Academy. We kept hearing he was. <laughs> I think good. He got too big. He got too big too fast. Like <laughs> he looked he like a monster. Out. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he was like seven foot one playing with a bunch of four foot tall kids. <laughs> What about the post, the since the postcast or the post, also the website that is updated constantly? Always. Um, you guys should sponsor. Uh, fine, I'll include myself. We should sponsor a, a youth sports team just because that'd be funny for like, Ooh. especially if it was a hater, like their kids playing against like, oh, fucking hell. <laughs> this, is a great, this, is a, this is a great does, idea. Not even, doesn't even have to be soccer. It'd be funnier if it was a, like a kid's little league team or Softball something. Team. You know, like, this is a post. <laughs> uh, well, let me ask you this. Does Clifton have a sponsor? Just the Clifton parents, you know. Say soccer is a, you know, that's more of a low, oh. low. Are you, are you guys looking for shirt sponsors? Wanna, you want a shirt <laughs> no, sponsor? <I'm... laughs> <laughs> I made this is my nerdy thing. I did. Uh, Clifton doesn't really have a name, like a, but like our team that we've kept for all these years, we're the Blue Tigers mm. for better or worse. So I AI generated a Clifton Blue Tigers logo, and for me and Zach, went on Threadless and put 
put put that bad boy on a gray tri blend. So I'll be rocking that on the sideline. I'm tired of these Catholic schools having like their coaches wearing like gear from the school. Yeah. So Clifton's gonna look a little swankier this year <laughs> with my Clifton Blue Tigers logo. Need some Sponsored visors. Yeah. Sponsored by Mid Journey and the Postcast. Yeah. <laughs> fly emirates for some reason (laughs) literally we will take it (laughs) oh well on that note chief get us out of here go fuck yourself san diego Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Cincy Postcast. It is a production of The Post Cincy. You can check us out at thepostcincy.com or just click a link in the description to check out some of our written work. It also has links to our social media accounts across all sorts of different platforms, including YouTube, where we are trying to do more and more video content. Please, dare I say it, like and subscribe and leave a comment. Uh, but no, that would be really, really helpful. I also want to give a thank you to Jim Trace and the Makers. They're a local Cincinnati band who provided all of the music for this episode. We love having them on board. You can check them out. Again, link in the description of this episode to find out where they might be playing shows next or where you can listen to more of their music. also want to give a massive, massive thank you to the awesome and very attractive patrons over on patreon uh it is a voluntary subscription that people take out with no real promise of anything extra that keep this show afloat and we are so so thankful to those of you that have decided to take that commitment if you do like the show or at least just want to engage with other people who have listened to the show and want to talk about fc cincinnati mls soccer or really anything else uh, you can go on over to discord again link in the description lots of links in the description where you can find a link to the discord that's where we are keeping the conversation going 24 7 it feels like it's a really fun group of people in there just talking about fc cincinnati and like i said just about everything else And finally, I'll say it. If you liked this episode and given the fact that you've made it all the way to the end, I have to assume you either like it or for some reason cannot reach the stop button. Please share this episode with a friend or family member or someone who likes FC Cincinnati. The best way for us to grow is from a personal recommendation from somebody who likes it. And if that's you, please tell other people. If you don't have any friends, feel free to give us a review on whatever your podcast platform of choices. We'll take anything we can get. But again, a huge, huge thank you to everybody for listening to the show. I am blown away that anybody listens to this. So again, I well and truly mean this. Thank you so much for listening.